So we're gonna, we don't have any time setting. There's no Indian here of saying, um, like they ask you, like the day after, Seder, how, how late did you guys go, right? How late did you go? There's no Indian here, whether we do this, whether we go through this in an hour, whether we go through this in three hours, whether we last till chatzos, it's not the Indian. The Indian is not that at all. Anyone that comes to Kinos, that is, is this in this uh, expectation zone of okay now now it's all going to happen it's going to all hit here what does that even mean what does the kinos mean today to us we're going to try to see how they get through us and i think that it's very important uh, to to set us to say this in the beginning that we're not here to learn about the kinos. This is not the, uh, uh, the way we do it is not to discuss the different stanzas and the grammar that was used and all the different choices that the Kalir made. This is not, this is not how, how we're doing it here. But we're gonna be hopefully opening our hearts with, with seeing how all of Jewish history and all of Jewish future in a certain way is found through these kinot. I'm sorry. And I actually wanted to start from somewhere, from, a, from, a, from an outside source to get us into the zone of what we're, what we're attempting to, to, to start to do right now with this, with this warning that we have that we actually have no idea what to do with. We still have no idea what to do with. So I saw a letter that actually was brought down from Rabbi Yaakov Mi'emdin. And it's brought down in his sitter, and it was written, this letter was written by a non-Jewish tourist that came to Beis HaMikdash. You have to listen to these words. This is a non-Jewish tourist that spent time in, and he saw the Beis HaMikdash. So the way that it's written in, in, in Rabbi Yaakov Emden's sitter, he says, this non-Jewish tourist, he witnessed the highest day of the year, the time of the Ba'is, right? With the, I guess the second highest day of the year, probably Yom Kippur was the highest. He came and he saw the Hakravas of the Korban Pesach, Erev Pesach. And he describes what it was like. Kohanim ba'avodasam. He saw Kohanim doing what they're supposed to be doing. Ve'levim b'shiram u'bezimram. He was zochet to hear what real Jewish music sounds like in the most purest form. And he was so taken by what he saw that he ends the letter to Jewish people like this. <clears throat> After the Churban Beis HaMikdash, he was still alive. And he writes like this, How do you, after what I saw, how do you, Yidin, still have a taste of life? Why do you even want to still, why do you still want to be alive? He writes. Now this is a non-Jewish perspective, right? You heard the last thing he said here. He said, first thing is, I don't understand how you still have a taste of life. And I don't understand how you're not asking Hashem to kill all of you and take you from this world. How could you still live in a reality that doesn't have what I saw? And if I saw what I saw, and I'm not even Jewish, I cannot even begin to imagine to experience what your experience was like or what your daily life is like without having that which I saw. Now. You and I have, don't have any, we have very, very, if nothing, relationship to this type of vision. Even when we say words like in last night's kina, Zachor Hashem Mehayalanu, remember what we had, 
we have to use our imagination in the deepest, deepest depths to begin to understand the letter written like this. What do the keynote do? The keynote attempt, and, and it's not easy. These words, most of these words are words we don't use in our day-to-day -day life. Even if we were Israeli and we were talking Hebrew. These are not words we generally speak. But what the keynote are trying to carve into us is also wondering, is it tam yesh l'chaim? What tam is there for life? Now, everything I said right now until now would have stemmed pretty smoothly before 1948. Like we mentioned last night in the keynote, in a, in a Eicha reading, Post-1948 and the Metzius that we're living in right now, that from this window over here, between 10 and 12, or 11.30 on a clear day, you could actually see Harabayit. And you'll have a very hard time saying the words in Mincha of Nachim about, the, about Yerushalayim being orphaned, Yerushalayim not having any Yidin there. We don't know, you see, we, we have no idea how to even relate to these words because we're not sure if we actually believe in them anymore. But let me tell you, there's plenty of busha v'cherba that we could connect ourselves to, unfortunately. Haray, as we're speaking right now, as we just were laning, and as we were davening shachris on Tisha B'av in another beautiful, glamorous building, there were rockets that were, that were, that were aimed towards Yerushalayim and Beit Shemesh, and Beit Meir, and Shoresh. And it can happen here any second too. It's such a wild, wild choice of, it's such a wild experience of life. It, is get, it gets so wild and it can mess with our minds. It messes with us. Now here's the deal. These keynotes are not here right now to depress us. There are plenty of other things in life that could depress us. The kinot, like Rabbi Nachman explains, is the same letters as the word tikkun. And tikkun is the same letters, like we say every year, as the word tinok. And tinok is the same letters as a word we say every year that's called nituk. Very interesting that the hitnat kut, 17 years ago, another khurban in our arm. Tishabav. What are we doing with these kinot? We're hopefully tending to a something that happened a long time ago. And that was a nituk, a disconnect that we had when we came down to this world from living in a world where we're learning with the malach. There was a nituk. There was a disconnect. And since then, the child, the tinok, is still very much alive in our lives. Each and every person in this room still has mommy and daddy issues. It's probably how it's going to be forever. And that Tinok is looking around everywhere. Can anyone hear my pain? Can anyone see what's really bothering me in this world? Can anyone identify with the things that drive me crazy? Ultimately, looking for a Tikkun. But the only way to get to that Tikkun is to stop denying that the Tinok that's very much alive inside of us is looking for Nechama is looking for someone to understand them. And this, the tzaddikim say, is what the word kinot really come to tend to. But you have to be brave enough to hear some very gruesome things. You have to be brave enough to understand that our Metzius in this world, from the time, mainly since Churban Bayi Cheni, has been one where the rest of the world is asking us, why are you guys still choosing to be alive? Some ask them, like this tourist, after witnessing who we, could have, who we were and what we could be. But some look at us and they just say, I want to get away, I want to get as far away from you as possible. I want to be so distant from you. I don't want to have to, anything to do with you, smelly, filthy, dirty Jew. I don't know how many people in this room ever experienced that. If any, at all. Our parents don't. My, 
I told you many times that my father was brought up in the streets of Argentina. That's because his parents fled Poland after the war. But you know who else fled to Argentina after the war, right? My father grew up, after his mother jumped off the train on the way to Auschwitz, my father grew up with many neo-Nazis in his neighborhood. Neo-Nazis that would run after him after school, chuck things at him, call him dirty Jew. So I don't know how many of us, I mean, I, I don't think I was ever, maybe I was when I was a kid, and I don't remember. But this thing of filthy Yid, this is not something that's lost. As much as we've made advances, you know, in the world, this is something that's so, so much, it's, it's, it's very, very there. And the first Kina, this first Kina, Kina Vav, speaks exactly about this. <clears throat> I just have to tell you the irony. My red, my red alert keeps on going on, right? As I'm talking. And this la I just mentioned my father, the last red dome was Afshalom. Amash, this second, as I said, my father, I talked to my father. This first kina that we have, kina vav, shava surimimeni. Shava surimimeni, Shabbat, everything came to a standstill, everything stopped. Suru mimeni shimu ovrai, turn away from me, get out of here, were the words that, that those that exiled me told me. They made me to be a filthy person amongst the nations. In the eyes of the world, we've been tame for many years, no matter how many times it seems like things have changed. And this concept of Shava Surimeni is emphasized over and over in the kinos we're saying in Eicha. And we, we have to, we begin the, the kinos understanding that the depths of Chorban Abayit is not just blood and tears and sorrows. It's, it's the Chilu Kvod Yisrael that exists in the world. Now sometimes we need like, we, it's interesting, there like, there's like footage from France. I saw footage from France earlier this year of some Jews getting hot in an alleyway in France. And everyone says, wow, you know, that's Golos. If they only came to Eretz Yisrael, they wouldn't have to go through this. What do you think about that statement? Think about what I just said. You see a Jew running for his life in the alleyways of France, because he's a Yid. And, that, and then you, you say, ah, if he just came to Eretz Yisrael, he would never have to go through something like that. What do you think about that statement? Take that statement in for a second. You see, that's Tisha B'Av Yaakov. That's exactly it. That's not true. Maybe here, walking in Efrat, walking around here in our little, you know, our little bubble. But what about in places where it matters most? Suru Suru Tameh. You need Tisha B'av? You need to be a reawakened to the reality that we're in? It's okay, Chavre, we're saying harsh things today. It's Tisha B'av. It's Tisha B'av. And this theme that we've become a universal object and symbol of Tuma in the world hasn't stopped. We say words like Ata Kala Hichbadata, Ibono Shalam, you Hichbadata, you gave covered to those that are so kal, to, to, to nations that are so nothing. Made up nations suddenly have covered in the world. You hear that? Made up nations have covered in the world. What's a made up nation? It's, it's, a, it's a name we refer to the Arabs of today here in Eretz Israel that is a made up non-entity that we made up, but we say the Ribbona Shleilam, Ata Kala Hichbata, you just raised up, made up entities. You, things that are not even real, suddenly like have become Kovadik in the world. What kind of world is this? 
shouldn't the things that deserve real covet be, be meromam, be elevated? And that's not the situation. Now, in, in, in all honesty, and, and to be just, to be real with the chavra here, you know, we could take every kina here and just take it to Maidanek, take it to Treblinka, take it to Trenzin, take it to, you could do this with every single kina in order to feel it a little bit closer. We're not going to do it with every single kina. But I once heard Rav Weinberger say something on Tisha B'av that hasn't left me. It's a story that hasn't left me. And I think that many of us could have heard these stories from our grandparents, but they probably chose to spare us. But one of these stories, I, this story never left me. And this is the story of the Chustarov. And he said that they, when they were marching, on Tisha of one year, they were marching. The Germans made them march across a bridge. And it was mamish like a hundred degrees outside. And the Germans were schlepping them and Yidin were so sick already. They couldn't control themselves. They, they, were, they were being beaten. And the Germans announced that they have to stand on the bridge. And any Jew, excuse me for saying this, that has to go, make their tzrachim, that they would be punished and they would have to mamish lick it off the floor. This is the world we were brought into, by the way. On Tisha B'Av you could say this thing. Now the Chus described that every year there was so sick with infections that it was, it was basically a sick, t tormenting game that the Germans did with us. And some one year started crying and crying because he realized he couldn't control himself. And the Germans started saying to him, do what we said right now. Do what we said right now. Do it right now. And he was begging, this is just something I, I can't do. I can't do. And he got on his knees and he pushed, couldn't bring himself to do it. And in front of everyone, they shot him to death and chucked him off that bridge at that moment. When you look at that story, Shava suru mimeni, suru suru mimeni, get out of here. Tame, tame yikra. Do you know how many stories like that happened that we know of? And do you know how many thousands of stories like that happened? that we'll never know of? You see, up until the World War II, when we thought about Tisha B'Av, it was much, much harder to feel the pain. But after World War II, to think about Tisha B'Av, it's not such a hard thing anymore, unfortunately. But we begin this kinos with like basically starting off of this place of, okay, this is, this is where we're going. We're going to this nikuda of absolute, absolute disgrace and busha. And Ribbon Shleim, at the end of the day, we're going to see the question that we ask through every kina without actually saying it is, Ribbon Shleim, why would you do this to yourself? Why would you do this to yourself? Before we say this first kin, I just want to say one more thing. Last, uh, maybe it was two years ago or three years ago on Yom HaShoah, we did, during COVID, we did a segment called The Rebbe's You Never Heard Of. And it was a very strong session we did describing the lives of the Rebbe's that you probably didn't hear of because they were thrown off bridges. They were, this is what happened to them. And one of the greats was the Yanuka of Slonim. By the chain of the Nesivas Shalom was one of the great, great ones. I think his name is Reb Shlomo David. And he... We have, his, we have the last words that he said before the Germans killed him. 
And he quoted a mashal from the Rishner Rebbe. And the Rishner Rebbe said like this, that one of the servants in the palace of the king began to curse the prince and to beat the prince. Again, a servant in the palace of the king began to curse the, and beat the prince. And as the prince was lying on the floor gushing blood, he screamed out from the depths of his heart, you could beat me as much as you want, but I will always remain a Ben Melech. It's my Metzius, it's my reality. You can torment me as much as you want. You could chuck as many rockets as you want into anywhere here in Eretz HaKodesh. You could scream at me on Har Abayis while I'm trying to connect. Uh, there's nothing you could do. It's just my DNA. I'll always be a Ben Melech. I'm faithful and loyal to my Abba, the King. And you, you will forever be a nothing, a servant. You're going to for, forever, you're going to be a nobody. A nobody. So the Slonimer said, this Yanuka said, that Shlomo HaMelech looked into the future. And he saw that there'll be a time where it's going to be bikashtiu velo metzatiu. We're going to yell and scream and beg for Rachmanus and no one's going to answer. And it's going to feel like, wait a second, am I still the Ben Melech? And Shlomo HaMelech said there's going to be a Hester Panim one day where nothing's going to add up. But on that day, Mitzauni HaShomrim, Shlomo HaMelech says, the guards will find me. Who's the Shomrim? Nebuchadnezzar and his sons, his soldiers, his sons, Yimach Shemam, they'll find me. But, and this is the Pneumius of Shir Hashir, but despite all that, Hishbati etchem b'not Yerushalayim. What is Hishbati etchem b'not Yerushalayim? I made a vow to you. I made you swear, but not Yerushalayim, the daughters of Yerushalayim. So this is an amazing thing. I want you to go to, the, to this place where a Nazi is standing with a gun into the face of the Yanuka of Slonim. He was young. I think he was 27. And, then, and he said to them, in German, I'm going to make you all swear, all of you here who have a hand in our slaughter, and all those in the future who will deny whatever happened here. And wow, what a world we're living in. With Greisa Holocaust deniers popping up every single day. The Kailin, the, 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 the Slonimer said, Im tim is dodi, on the day of judgment, you're going to meet by beloved. Each and every one of you. Ma tagidulo. What are you going to tell Hashem then? Ki choi las, ahava ani. Ki choi las, ahava ani. That's what you're going to tell your Creator, each of you, Yimach Shemchem, when you meet Him. That what? That I stood over a Jew with a gun in his face, and all he did was talk about you. Tell them this. You who saw this and did this to us, you're the best witnesses. Tell my beloved that I remained a faithful prince, a faithful son to him. And we are your children despite all that we're going through. You who are killing us, you tell this to God when you meet him. You'll bear testimony that because of our great love for God, I was tormented. I suffered amongst you, Shomrei HaChomos, Shomri HaChomos, he was talking to the builders of the ghetto. You will testify that I kept the Torah till the end. And he looked into the German's eyes and he said, Ki chayla sahava ani. What are you going to do about that? And of course, at that moment, the German pulled out his gun. The Slonimer started singing a nigun. And he took his life. To me, the contrast between the first thing we said to the end is everything, you see. The Chilul Kvot Shemayim that's happened to us Yidin in the world, 
to many people has become the way that Jews look at themselves. Like we were mentioning upstairs last week, was it last week with Gedalia Fenster, when, who identifies as a Jew out there in the world today? Everyone else identifies as their own religion. Jews are finding other words to identify because, because of Shava Surim, because of this Kina. But then you have Yidin like the Yanuka, the Slonimer, and we see it's possible. It's actually possible to, to be a, a, a lone soul based on Migdash walking through this world. That no matter what happens, Ki Chola Sahava Ani, like the Mashal of the Rishner, Mani Asen, you could beat me to the ground. I am a Ben Melech. I am a Ben Melech. So somewhere in this Kina, I don't know, as we read it, maybe it'll pop up, meeting each other in between these places of Busha, filthy Jew, dirty Jew, to the place of Ani Ben Melech. So we'll say right now, this Kina, Shava Sulam Imeni Shimuni of Rai, Schiu Maos Simoni Berech Abirai. Sakosi Mishka Mishkos Bira, Sakosa Bogu and Giborai. 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 Sakosa Bogu Shilot kav sarea, potzu harashaim aye chasidea, potzu mar seer yolindea in lea peres, that's yam biadea. Al hard see in sadu shine me da night, safu al rai shade see in today night. Tom so benevla made the day night. Tide not sight on the oil me da night, so come be me when deny. So the cool adino. At a kali mihbadeta. מעדי אמוני, קרבת בו אלי ואיך אמוני. קרסי אלוש בגבעון עוד אם זה אמוני, קורא לי להשמיע בערב יגר אמוני. קומי, עבור לי בהתל אמוני. קרסי למאווי המה רימוני, למה רוח אפינו לטבח שמרנו? ראיסו כי כסונו אוי לי חמרו, ראיסו כי אמר וכעס באביריך גמרו. רבת ביד יחזקאל במקום כמו מרו, ראה ונכחידם מגוי אמרו. ראה אדוני כי צאי לי מאי חמר מרו. אשיבנו סיסי, שימה לגוי צעני, שיפתם רמייס חצי לילת כי איני, סבסי משרי דביר דממו לעדי ואיני. שומעת הזמר אסף וכין לתעתני, שוח בו ונדו חצץ לבני איני, שומו כי נאנחו אני. כי תמחקת בחי סייפניך, תשיב להם גמול כי אז חסייס פניך, תרדף לצר מין יוצא על צפיניך. תיתן לאביב נא יצא פניניך, תקרא לשקרם כה יזכמוס בפניניך, טוב הכל עצמו לפניך, טוב היל צר אשר כי לנו. למבוך חמאס בכם הניהלנו, ניהלנו, עד לך הלך מחבר יגלנו, זוכינו בחור בסולה כבלונו. רם הבית נא עמך כולנו, זכר עד עיניי מהיולנו. The next kina we're going to be doing is kina zayin. Eicha atzta be'apecha. When we say eicha atzta be'apecha, we have to stop for a second and try to understand again. What are we bichlal trying to do through kinos? We gave one answer before. And we gave this answer that the baby in us, the tinok, that experienced, experienced a nituk, is looking for a tikkun. And we do this through kinos. One of the questions, though, that we have to ask is, is there room to look at the Ribbon Shleilam through Kinos and basically say, how on earth could you have done this? Obviously, the question always goes with, why would you do this to yourself? Because you're the one, Ribbon Shleilam, that's been suffering more than any of us, Kiv Yochol, since Chorban Abayis. But this question of how, did you, how, how could you have done this takes, takes shape now in this Kina Zayin. Eicha atzta be'apecha means, wow, Ribbon Shleim, how did you rush to do this? Boom! How did you just do this? This is crazy. How, how, how did this happen? 
How on earth did this happen? So there's two ways of asking this question, how could you do this? This is what I want to talk about for a few minutes. How could you do this? How could you have done this? Anyone that's learned Eish Kodesh sees that as the war is getting crazier and crazier, the Eish Kodesh's way of asking, how could you be doing this, Ribbon HaSholam, becomes deeper and deeper and deeper and sharper and more intense as every Shabbos would go by in the ghetto. And the Eish Kodesh is sitting there and he's seeing people falling or being taken away by the week. And he's sitting there trying to give chizuk and give emunah. And he's sitting there and he's basically asking, And now these are very strong words to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Because with all the holy chutzpah that we like talking about over here, at a certain point it's like, Rega, chakeshnia. It's still God. With all the holy chutzpah that we've tried to develop over the years, How do you start talking to Hashem like this? This is not a simple thing. It's not a simple way to talk to God. And we've always been very careful to be simple Yidin, but yet, all of Klal Yisrael say this kina, I don't know how many people understand what they're saying, but all of Am Yisrael says, How could you have rushed to do such a huge thing, such a horrible thing? Usually we're told we can't talk like this to Hashem, but the human condition of man, and, and Rav Soloveitchik speaks about this Throughout his, expl- throughout his drushas on kinas, the human condition demands, the human condition which was created by God, demands of the human being to, to come into this alter. I don't even want to say altercation, to come to this mivgash with HaKadosh Baruch Hu asking such a question. So the Rav, a famous, famous, uh, we say Torah, you know what's so funny? We say we can't learn Torah on Tisha B'av, right? It's also to learn Torah on Tisha B'av. It's funny. I know chaver that learn probably more Torah when they, when they sit through the kinas on Tisha B'av than they do all year long. It's like we have these, these I can't stand these, these flyers, Halayla Lolom Dim Torah, right? Because every other Layla we're steiging away, right? Halayla Lolom Dim Torah. Aye. <laughs> it's funny. When you, when, you, when, you, when, you, when you hang out with Rav Soloveitchik on Tisha B'Av morning, you basically have, you have Kola Torah Kula. It's not in a way you wanted to receive it, but it is what it is. Now the Rav would distinguish, and it's very important for us to distinguish, to distinguish this, this as well. It has a lot of halachic ramifications between Avelus Chadasha and Avelus Yeshana. What is, what is Avelut Chadasha and what's, what's like new morning and what's Avelut Yeshana? Old morning, M O U R N I G, N I G, right? So avelut chadasha is nevach when someone dies. That's an avelut chadasha. Someone leaves the world. This is avelut chadasha. Avelut yeshana is when we mourn over something that happened many many years ago. And Rav Soloveitchik explains that from. The, the mitzvahs of Tisha B'av is the whole thing of saying kinos publicly. That's, that's not Avelut Chadasha, that's Avelut Yeshana, right? Or is it? Which one is it? So Ba Avelus Chadasha, we don't have a concept of kinos. We say a hasped, but we don't start saying kinos. I've never seen this at a shiva house that someone starts saying kinos. We have a spadi, we have memories, it's all fresh. It feels very much tari, it's very close to home. But if Salvechik explains that that thing we go through through a shiva, we should all be begebench with, with long, long years and healthy life. So by Tisha B'av, it, it, it actually says, Kiru le Mekoninos, like it's something we need to call people to come and wake us up to feel. The whole thing is to, to arouse a pain that we may not feel connected to anymore. So we're doing this, we're telling these stories where we're, we're, we're going to any calamity that has befallen us and we're trying to grab it to say, am I awake? Am I just fasting for, like, am I fasting for nothing this year? Is something going to actually happen to me? Now, 
an Avelus Chadasha, and this is, I picked up a Sefer two weeks ago, and I, I was sure that this was the Sefer I was gonna, it was gonna answer all my philosophical questions in the world. Well, there's only one problem. He said, I haven't had the, the, I haven't been brave enough to open it up yet. So I don't know if it's answering any of the questions. It's a Sefer from Rav Tao. Rav Tao is the Rosh Yeshiva of Yeshivat Har Hamor. Rav Tao was one of the great students of Rav Kuk's son, Rav Tzvi Yehuda Kohen Kuk, Zetzal. And Rav Tao's Sefer that I, I picked up was the whole thing of how does a Yid accept death in this world? If death is the opposite of the purpose of why Hashem created us. How does that stem with the Yid? Tachlis. I'm looking around the room now. We've, we've unfortunately been to the vias of beloved ones of people in this room, some a bit farther from now, uh, older, longer times away from now, some fresh. Rav Salavechik says, by Velus Chadasha, it's, whether we, whether we understand it or not, it's mimin hago shel olam. That, that's the way the nature works. That's the way the world works. It doesn't say anything about what you could feel. I know people that experienced the loss of someone in their 90s and it felt like they lost their child in a terrorist attack on the level of pain. Everyone experiences pain differently. Everyone goes through this differently. But that's a velus chadasha as memin haga shel olam. It's from the nature of this world. People live and they die. But when it comes to Khurban Beis Hamikdash, so Rav Soloveitchik said that the Khurban is not Mimin Hago Shel Olam. The, what happened there, and we will get to descriptions of what happened there shortly, although if you were following Eicha last night, you don't need anything else. You don't need any other description. But these things, what happened, in Churban Abayis is not Mimin Hago Shel Olam. That's not, this is not a natural process that happened in the world. It's Me'al Ateva. It's above and beyond nature. We don't understand this at all. You know, last week was the Slonim Rebbe, the Nesiv Shalom's yard site, right? I think it was Thursday. And the Nesiv Shalom wrote, we learned this this last, is it this year, last year, we learned it with the women's Chabura, we learned it on Yom HaZikaron, or Yom HaShoah. It's a kuntras that they put out in Slanim called Haharuga Alecha. And it's all the shmuzes, shmuzes, it's all the outpourings of the soul that the Slanim Rebbe spoke about the Shoah, about the Holocaust. And he also speaks about this over there, that a human being goes through this world and has to dif- differentiate between Avelut Yeshana and Avelut Chadasha. Avelut Chadasha, it's Kind of, kind of, to a certain extent, it's mimin hago shel olam. But something happened in the world that you and I are li- live in that is me'al ateva. Now it started with churban abayis, but as the Esh Kodesh said, and wrote in his ghetto, and the famous, famous, famous footnote that he deleted, that he crossed out, remember the famous footnote? There was a famous footnote that the Ish Kodesh added later as the, year, as the war was progressing. Because in the beginning of the war, and when he's sitting in the ghetto, the Rebbe writes over there, things like this that we're experiencing have not happened since Khurban Bayit Shani. And then, a little bit later, a year later, a year and a half later, the Rebbe writes, remember what I wrote then? That things like this never happened since Khurban Bayit Shani? I take it back. What we're experiencing, Khurban Bayis has nothing on. I gave one 45 second story of the Chusta Rav said about a bridge on Tishabav. <clears throat> Spend the day with Shoshana and Yad Vashem. Spend two hours with, with the Shailas that Rav Oshri was, was receiving to understand what kind of a life we were living in. It's not mimin hago shel olam. <clears throat> this is not from this world. So Rav Soloveitchik says like this. Let's get back to this. He says like this. That when it comes 
to what we're describing as Avelut Chadasha. So at that moment, a, a person cannot question Hashem. Like, what do we basically say about Avelut Chadasha? We have a thing called Tzidduk Adin. We say, Baruch Dayan Emes. At Sheva House, it's not, we're not, we're not questioning. Uh, those of us that have, you know, been living in Eretz Yisrael, we've been to some crazy Shiva houses, crazy Shiva houses, where the most natural question would be, Eicha atzta ba'apecha. Eicha, like a whole Eicha Shiva house. Somehow that's not what happens. It's, it's the craziest thing. I saw this for the first time when my father took me to the house, to the Shiva house of Nachshon Waxman. My father took my brother and I to the home of Nachshon Waxman, to Menachem, his parents, Yehuda and Esther Waxman. I think, his, I think Yehuda left the world a year or two ago, the Abba. And you think their son, their precious, beautiful son, Nachshon, who was kidnapped and kept in captivity Mamash, a few minute drive from his parents' house, and Nebuch was killed while the, our holy, holy soldiers were trying to <clears throat> free him on Friday night. And him, together with Sergeant Nir Poraz, a chayal that was busy trying to help save him, they were killed. When you walked into the Waxman Shiva house, it was almost like Vayidom Aaron. We have so many questions, but now is not the time. Maybe this world isn't even the time. So Rav Soloveitchik says, Avelus Chadasha, Baruch Dayan Emes, Tzidduk Hadin, there's not questioning. But when it comes to Avelus Yeshana, that's the mourning over the entire people being thrown into Gullus. When it comes to Klal Yisrael, Rav says, not only is there a heter to ask Eicha, but it could be, Rav Soloveitchik says, maybe it's even a mitzvah to ask, how could you have done this? You hear this? Maybe it's even a mitzvah. I don't know what mitzvah it would fall under. But the Rav says, maybe it would even be a mitzvah to ask, Eicha, how could you do this? Echoliot. And we learned this basically from Yirmiyahu Anavi. Yirmiyahu Anavi, who we heard from last night. Yirmiyahu Anavi, who we heard from right now in Haftarah. And the question that we have, Eicha, you have to understand, it's not how could you do this, oh hated one. We're asking someone that we love, how could you do this? Our question stems from loving the Ribbono Shalom. How could you do this? And the, pers- the, the purpose of asking Eicha is actually to, be, to bring Rachamim and Am Yisrael. That somehow Hashem sees me asking, asking Him so many years later, how could you do this? Your children are so precious. How could you do this? So, this is basically learned from Moshe Rabbeinu. Where do we see Moshe Rabbeinu pulling the same exact in? So the end of Parsha Shmos after Moshe Rabbeinu sees that after he comes, this, he begins his shlichus. Moshe Rabbeinu begins his shlichus, and then what happens? He sees it's getting worse. And he comes to Hashem, and he says, Eicha. He doesn't say the word Eicha. But what does he say? What's the end of Parsha Shmos? It's basically, HaKadosh Baruch Hu, how could you do this? Ume'az bati el paro. Since I started spreading your word in the world, things are getting worse. But listen to what the Midrash says. This is unbelievable. I'm reading for you a Midrash that says, it's a Midrash Rabbah right on this Indian of Moshe Rabbeinu coming to God and basically saying Eicha. Okay, now you and I ask Eicha all the time. I just don't know if we do it like this, but we ask Eicha quite often, how could you do this? How could you do this? I've, I've made Aliyah, I brought my family here and I have no Parnassah. How could you do this? I chose to raise my children in Eretz Yisrael because of the Gevaldig, the, the schut to raise kids in Eretz HaKodesh and my children are not interested in Shabbos. How could you do this? 
Let's face it. These are, these are our questions of today. So listen, listen to this Midrash. The Midrash says like this. When Moshe Rabbeinu said, Lama hare osa la'amazeh. Why are you making it so bad for Yidin? Al davar zeh biksha midas hadin lifgoa b'moshe. The midah of din, the midah of judgment said, Chutzpan Yaakov, are you crazy? Who gave you the reshut to say such words to God? Biksha midas hadin lifgoa b'moshe. Adao dichsiv, vaydaber elokim el moshe. That's why then it says elokim spoke to Moshe. Elokim is midas hadin. But Hashem says, wait a second, midas hadin. But he saw, Rebona Shleilam saw, the Moshe Rabbeinu was saying this because, because he sees families making Aliyah and barely being able to make it. Because he sees families that chose to leave all the comforts of Chutz Laretz, and it's here that their children start questioning the validity, authenticity, and really shaykhs to the Torah. And that's why he's saying what he's saying. Chazar v'nahag imo b'midas rachamim. Hashem said to Midas Adin, wait a second, you're not hearing where he's, why he's saying what he's saying. Chakem. <laughs> and then it says, Vayomer elav, ani yudke vavke. Ani Hashem. Right there, right there, in those few psukim, the connection between the end of Shmot and the beginning of Va'era is our whole story of how we can come and start saying keynote. How we, how, how we act the way we act on Tisha B'Av. It's not a chutzpadik morning. It's not a chutzpadik morning of saying harsh things to God. It's Eicha Atzta Ba'apecha Libono Shel Olam. Look how much we've tried. Look how many families are, are trying so hard. And they're getting lost along the way. Eicha atzta ba'apecha. How could you do this? So I want to, before we say the kina, one more thing. This, because this kina is really our, our heter. It's our, it's our Pesach hashar. It's the way we can go into the rest of kinot. And basically, like, bringing before God all the bad things he did in the world, and, and really saying, Eicha, 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 Eicha. So, Be'esh Kodesh, and of course you're going to hear his name all morning. Really, you're going to hear his name every day, every day until Mashiach comes, the Be'esh Kodesh's name has to be mentioned. And it is, Baruch Hashem. So, this is March 1941, and the Be'esh is explaining he was in the middle of explaining like horrible things happening in the ghetto, okay? He goes into detail, I'm not gonna do that right now. But the Rebbe brings a, a fascinating midrash that says that there's a Mizbeach in Shemaim, and Malach Michael brings the souls of Am Yisrael onto this Mizbeach. I'm gonna read it in Hebrew, and he asks, he asks a question. He asks the following question. He looks at the Mitziyot, he looks at what's going on, Yidin dropping by the day in gruesome ways, and he says like this, The Gemara in Chagiga, the Tos was there, they quote this Medrash, the Malach Michal brings the Neshamas of Am Yisrael, like an Akedas Yitzchak, onto a Mizbeach. Why is he makriv Am Yisrael? Says the Rebbe. Can't be. What do we know? The famous song. What side is Michael? Miyamini Michael. Mele, if it was it was Mismaili Gavriel. if it was Gavriel, was the one that was bringing these karbanas. Gavriel, small, din. Yamin, chesed. Mimini Michal. The Rebbe says, wait a second. Aval Michal, who amel it's Yosher li Yisrael. Michal is the one that's pulling Moshe Rabbeinu's end of Parashat Shmot. 
So what is Michal saying to Hashem? Listen to this. Ribono shel olam. Im et yisurecha ata sovel, v'al kvodcha ha-mechulal, ata marich af. If it's just you that's suffering, that's one thing. Aval et yisurei banecha, ech ata sovel kol kach. How could you suffer your children being shechted? You see, we parents have a parents like the, the level of, of of when parents are going through pain and they see their children going through pain. We've learned already, unfortunately, or fortunately, I don't know. We've learned how to kind of suck it up, and my children attend to my children. So. The, the Ish Kredish is saying, Ribbon Shalim, what Michal and Malach is saying, it's Ribbon Shalim, you're able to, to, you're able to take it because it's just your cover that's Michula. I don't get that, but that's, that's your Indian. But one thing I don't understand. How are you so well to see the Yisurim of your children? But how are you able to still see Yiren being mechulal by the nations of the world? And here I want to add, apology, mechila, ready for saying this, because the chilul kvod shamayim of Am Yisrael has become such a thing that's become kavua already in the world, it's now Yiren that have for years already been taking such a part of helping the Chilul Kvod Shem Yisrael in the world. You see how confused we are, Hashem. You see Jews that mean very, they're very well intended. They mean very good, but they're so confused about what it means to be a proper Jew in the world. And in the name of Judaism, they'll even make Havdalah on 1 p.m. on Shabbos afternoon. In the name of Judaism, They'll do crazy, crazy things. You see, we're so confused, we don't even really know what it means to run our own country. So the Rebbe says, so the Ish Kodesh says, V'zeh shemakriv et ishmot Yisrael ifnei HaKadosh Baruch Hu, when he brings the neshamas of Am Yisrael onto the Mizbeach, it's lemor chusna al elu. It's not to shech them. It's saying, look at them. I'm putting them on the mizbeach so you'll look at them. Look at how confused we are. Look at how many times. Look at look look at what it's like to just build a country, to build a community, to build a shul. Look what happens in the in between. Look at this. Look how many people get lost on the way. I'm, he's taking the neshamas of Am Yisrael Malach Michal. He's putting it on the mizbeach. Ubifrat, the Rebbe says, Beotan Nishamot, Sheyatsu Merov Tsarot Veyisurim. And Dafka, he's taking those Yidin that look, they have the scars, they have the wounds all over them. He's putting those Nishamas in the Mizbeach. Velo Elu Nishamot Bilvad, Shekulan Yotzot Berov Oni, Veyisurim Veniftaru. He's not just taking the Nishamas of Yidin that have been killed in the ghetto. It's not what Malach Michal is taking. You know who else Malach Michal takes and puts on a, on a Mizbeach? He doesn't take Nachshon Waxman's Neshama and puts it on a Mizbeach. He doesn't take Rav Yehuda Dinentman, who we lost this year, and put him on a Mizbeach. He's also taking this precious widow and her infant, and putting them on the Mizbeach. <clears throat> and he's saying, just and by Hashem. I don't have to understand anything, but what I'm asking you is to look at them right now. Look at them right now. Thursday, I was in Ranana at a memorial for someone that was very, very close to me. He passed away. He didn't wake up Tisha B'Av morning. This is my parents' best friend. It's my best friend's father. 
Yuri kept my phone away from me during Kinos last year because the messages were coming in while we were doing Kinos. And right before Mincha, when I went outside, so Yuri, I wouldn't understand why he was holding my phone. He wouldn't give it back to me. It was very, very bizarre. Like I didn't, and then finally he gave it back to me and he said to me, Don Cates passed away. So, he, he was the closest thing to that uncle that we speak about. So because his yard site was this Shabbos, I went on Thursday night to the Askara. At the Askara, the father of Ari Weiss, Hashem Yikom Damo, Rabbi Stuart Weiss spoke at the Askara. You've heard me talk about Ari. It's going to be his 20th yard site this coming Tishrei. 20 years. When I have the chutzpah to ask Hashem, Eicha Atzta Be'apecha, or when I really, really think that maybe I actually understand what it means to ask for Mashiach, I stand behind Ari's parents. And Nebuch, there have been other parents that I stand behind over the years that have been added to that Rishima. Our dear friends Shimon and Esti Golovensitz are the ones that Michal, Malach Michal takes their neshamas and puts it on the Mizbeach. Not just this son David, Zichon Olivracha, Hashem Yikom Damo. Not just this son. The Rebbe is saying, but for people that have actually, that are still alive, that are walking, sco- walking wounds, walking scars. And he's saying to them, on these people, look at them. And this is, this is a whole sheer of what Kinot are about. This is, it's, this is the heter that we have to say such chutzpahdik words to Hashem today. It's because we love Am Yisrael so much. It's our love for Klal Yisrael that takes us to this place. It's our, once it stops being about the love, you better shut up. Because then the other side got the, got the worst of you. And to walk, that, to walk that balance in this world between remembering, he listening to myself, and is my azos dikdusha because I love Yidin? And when does it start to be like I'm just an angry, bitter person that questions ashgacha? That's a very fine line. That's a very fine line, a line we must make sure that we keep a very clear hakara, recognition of what we fall into. Tisha B'av is not the day of just lashing out whatever you want to lash out at everybody. Tisha B'av is the day of allowing yourself to realize how much you actually love Am Yisrael. And that's why you're so broken. And that's why you come to questions of Eicha Atzta Ba'apecha. And it's therefore for our love for Klal Yisrael, we're going to be asking hard questions this morning. So we'll say now, Kina Zayin, Eicha Atzta Ba'apecha. Eicha Atzta Ba'apecha Le'abed Biyad Adomim Emunecha. Velo Zachar Tabris Ben Abisarim Ashe Birar Talib Chonecha. How could you do this? How could you be so angry? You forgot. It seems you forgot how much how much love there is with us. Vases <laughs> Asher 
איך המילת במעשיך למחוס ביד מוני מנסיך, ולא זכרת נשיא אסנוצה סנשא אשר נשאסה לנצריך ובכן להינו, זכור הדיני מי עלינו. איך הסכת בסעדיך לסגר ביד צייפים סעדיך, ולא זכרת עוז עדי ידיים אשר התרת לעבדיך ובכן עלינו, זכור הדיני מי עלינו. איך פצת בפחדך לפגר ביד פריצים פליך ולא זכרת צלס. צבי צדק אשר צפנת מצבעך, וכן צעקנו, זכור אדינו אימי הוילנו, ואיך קרסה בקריוסיך, לקנוס ביד קמים קרואיך, ולא זכרת רגש רכב ליבוסיים אשר הציסו לרעיך, ובכן רגענו, זכור אדינו אימי הוילנו. איך חשבת בשעפך, אל תשלוס ביד ביד שקדים שלימך, ולא זכרת תכף טלטל את תואר אשר תיקנת לסמימך, ובכן טעננו זכור אדינוי מעלנו. טענו לשפך לב כמים על מי ביים זה נשבינו פעמיים. זוכר לי ביום סיבי שב וישב את מירושלים. רגנתי ואתה עדה עד חוג השמיים. So in the next kina, we're just going to speak about this very briefly, kina chet, a'adeh ad chug shamayim. This kina speaks about, <laughs> this kina speaks about, I got to go up there, can I fly up to the higher chambers where this stuff doesn't exist? But then the Kaliya says, on Tisha B'av, even in the higher chambers, b'mistarim tifke nafshi. There's no way, there's nowhere to hide. There's nowhere to fly up to and, and feel like, you know, there's a place that's void of pain. There's a place that's void of pain. And my last thought, I'm thinking of, of, of so many different people when this kina comes up and so many different parents when this kina comes up. Obviously, Ellie, I'm thinking about your sister and your brother. I'm thinking about you, thinking about Ilana, but I'm thinking obviously about your brother and sister. Your, your brother-in-law and sister, where every day when they wake up, there's probably a place inside, they say, I got to fly up to a world where this doesn't exist. I got to go to a place where this Metzius of losing their precious Dani and Meiron, I got to go to a place where that Metzius does not exist. But the Kalir says, but on Tisha B'av, what happens is, every, every place that I go to, where I think here it's beyond this world, or here this pain doesn't exist, I see Hashem crying in those corners as well. And this is the concept of Hester Panim, a famous anigun that became much, much more... Uh, much more um, famous. I mean, actually, it's not even, they say it's Rabbi Nachman wrote it, it's, it's not exactly, it's not his words exactly, it's a play on his words. That even in a concealment, amongst the concealment, so too there the Ribbon HaShtaylam exists. It's true, he exists. But you know what God looks like in those places, in that place of concealment amongst the concealment. See, we say, God is there. It's true, God is there. But usually when we think if we find God, we'll be okay. On Tisha B'av, we find God and we actually cry more. Why? Because in that place where we find Hashem, Hashem is crying. Bamistarim tifke nafshi. And there's so many people that say, if only I had that chuga shalayim. Like this period says, I, I'll go to somewhere where this doesn't exist. And in Tisha B'av, it's like that nightmare that you have where you're a nightmare, you're running away from, let's say, let's just, obviously in our day and age, you have a nightmare, you're running away from a Nazi, you're running away from a German, you're running away from a Yishmaeli. Maybe some people are, are, have, I actually know a few people, they've had dreams where they're running away from Romans. I never had a dream like that. They're actually running away from a Roman. And you're running away and you, you find Hashem, 
But the problem is that you find God and the Rebona Shalem is crying there. And every year, there's this place in you, and, and it's actually words that, that we say in this kina. Let's listen to this. Ayumasi b'chol shana omeres hi hashana hazos. Every year there's, a, there's that dream where I say, no, this time, this time I'm going to find Hashem. And this time I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be able to escape from that German, from that Nazi, from that terrorist, from that state of confusion of this world. I'm going to be, every year I say, I'm going to make it out of this maze. It's, the, it's this nightmare. But I, I say, this time I'm having it, I'm going to find a way out. And this is the buildup that we have towards Tisha B'Av every year. And the truth is, it's become more and more common for people to start saying, don't say, if chas v'shalem, it doesn't happen this year, in the pshul postings. Be a realist. It's going to happen. Tisha B'Av is going to happen again. The German got you again. The Hamasnik got you again. And those voices that say, listen, just be a realist, you know, don't, don't become a shugana. Just say, yeah, things haven't changed. We still don't have a base of English. It's going to continue to be like this. But some, somehow inside of us, every year, Ayumasi Bechol Shana, my ayom, my terror, my fear, says to me, he has hazos. This is going to be the year where it's not going to happen. Where I'm actually going to get out of it. I saw something I wanted to share with you. This is a, a startling teur. There was a tzaddik, uh, this description, there's a tzaddik in Yerushalayim, a very famous tzaddik of Shmuel Homener. It's a sefer called Eved HaMelech. And he was... He was one of the greats, greats, the previous generation of the Gedolim of Yerushalayim. This is Hevra that, you know, Tikkun Chatzos, like really crying over Yerushalayim, was not a Tisha of Indian. It was a Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday Indian. Every day of their lives. And his Tzipiyali Yeshua, his eyes that were looking for maybe this year the German won't get me in my nightmare, they really, he, he never let that fade away. He never became old. He never, he never became sarcastic about it, cynical about it. So obviously Erev Tisha B'Av by him was a very, very big, big day. A big day, Chet Av, a big day of, of, of extra crying, extra tears. And when he came to the Seudam of Seket, so the, the story is he would sit on the, on, the, on the ground and he was very excited. There were, there were tears of tzipiyah. He started crying, but the tears were, ot, ot, wow, this is going to be the year. Even during the Sudam of Seket, he says, I don't think you guys need to eat too much because you're going to have breakfast or you'll have dessert later tonight. And he would say the following pasuk that's in our kina: Ayumasi bechol shana omeres, he hashana hazos. My 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 terror tells me no. This year, the terror is going to be fed. It's going to be not fed. It'll be nimchak. It'll be erased. I remember the first year that I was in Shirat David, on Tisha B'av. We were in Gav's. Gav Karen's apartment, basement apartment on the bottom. And it was a very, very, it was a very special Tisha B'Av because I got to sit next to Jack, all of Hashanah. Jack was always a kid. Jack had Tmimus, Jack Goldberg. When he spoke to Jack about how it could be that this year it's going to happen, those of us that were zochet to see Jack respond saw a yid that really believed that it could be. What a privilege to go through this world meeting, knowing Jack. He was, he was something else. He was something else. 
He didn't lose that, listen, don't say this year that if chas v'shalom it doesn't happen, don't get people too excited. Or don't let them down too much. Jack, Jack was like this. And I sat next to him that Tisha B'av. And we had just moved to the neighborhood a few weeks before that. I don't know how many years ago it was already. It's a while ago. And um, I felt very humbled in his presence to be among someone. The truth is he planted a seed in me that you could say Torahs like this with people like this here in this community. And I never had the chance to tell him that he really did plant that seed of talking like this. It was Jack. And Jack, all of a sudden, would come to, even though it was so hard for him to walk down those stairs, both by Gav, and then afterwards when we moved beneath Ellie and Bonnie, anyone wants to see Aliyah la Regal, or you know, just walk him, watch him walk, you have to, you have to watch him walk down the stairs and walk up the stairs. That was Mamish Aliyah la Regal. It was unbelievable seeing him. And I'm sure like all of you, I miss him so much. I miss him so much. So in that spot where we sat on Tisha B'av, a few days later, a few weeks later, we sat there again, and this time we were, we were zolchet to drink from the fountain of Torah of one of my favorite Torah teachers, and that's Reb Moshe Rothschild. And Reb Moshe said a word, he said a word by the Satma Rebbe that I say it every year. We say later in Dvarim, in Elul, we say, what is Eretz Yisrael called? Eretz asher ene Hashem elokecha ba meireshis ha-shana ve'ad achris shana. Eretz Yisrael is a land that Hashem is always looking at. From when? From the beginning of the year to the end of the year. But there's a diuk in the Lashon and the Torah there. It says meireshit ha-shana from the beginning of the year till the end of the year. V'ad achrit shana. The Bali Kriya will know what I'm talking about. Says the Satma Rebbe, Reb Moshe taught us there. You know, we start off the year saying this is going to be Ha-Shana. Eli, do you remember this one? This is a special one. We start off the year saying this is going to be Ha-Shana. This is going to be the Shana. But you know what time has done to us? going through the year, it's made us so cynical about what things could happen. What could happen. So we end off the year, Hashana, Mireshit Hashana, Ve'ad Achrit, Shana. Another year passed. The Hey, which they say in Hebrew, Hey Hayediyah. Those of you that, that have learned any, any proper grammar, Hey Hayediyah. There is a Hei Hayediyah in our hearts every year on Tisha B'av that gets born where we say, maybe this will be the last Tisha B'av. Later in the year, when we say, maybe Tisha B'av won't happen this year, we say it more cynically. But today, right now, as we're sitting on the floor, when we say, this really may be the last Tisha B'av, we actually are able to say it with less cynicism. And like we learned in Shul this, this, this year, this last Shabbos, this year it's because, according to the Gemara and the Yerushalmi, Mashiach was already born yesterday, on Tisha B'Av. That wasn't Nitcha to today. So the cynicism hasn't yet creeped into us, saying that this is going to be like this every year. And you and I that are sitting right now on the floor, we actually believe this could be the last one. But as we read this kina, we look at thousands of years of Yidin that thought just like you and me. Ayumasi bechol shana omeres hi shana azaz. All my biggest fears came to me and said, maybe this is the year where I won't go through this anymore. And the plague of sarcasm has stricken our people in such a damaging way. Some of the most dangerous voices from the world of people that refer to themselves as rationalists have poisoned the tikva of a yid, that Mashiach can come. 
and will come. It's a it's it's the it's Tish above every day with that voice. We sit here on the floor right now because we even in this pit of hell have some we're made out of something that tells us he has shana has us. Yeah, it could it could still be that this is the last Tisha B'av that we're ever going to be sitting on the floor. But when we look at the Kina, we're reminded of all the other voices that try to tell us otherwise. So we'll say right now, this is Kina Chet, right? This is the eighth one. Ya'adeh ad chuk shamayim, alei ti shamayim, ha'or yom ha'chivi pa'amayim, es'on el mi ten roshimayim. Avchim b'ivchim leil midbar, avchana leil milil mi midbar mi midbar. Avakeh iti olas midbar eshag mi itneni b'midbar. Egdav b'eno shel keno kevzais, agarei iti ko b'nei b'ais. Egrom shiyar ba'al ha'ba'is, ir al-sheh mi itneni shami v'shais. Adve b'chol lev le'am tzi'eyu, ed aminin b'am l'am tzi'eyu. Ed ag'ay e'ro'e v'lam tzi'eyu, ed konen mi iten da'y adati v'am tzi'eyu. אהבך ואספך כאופן כמילאי, אהגה פנים בפנים לסנא שם עלי, אהלו חרץ ושר מלהגיע מולי, אצלח מי ייתן איפה ויקסום מילאי, אורח משפטי גונבי עלי, אודיע בביצי ומעלי, ומלולו מזלוס בקורים מי לי יפה מי ייתן שמי עלי, אז דא כאופרה אביו הנה אזכרה כי אייסי מחותנה, אז אין פלוגים כרביך וכבריך אל יין אגר מי יתן לי אבק היונה אך נפשו מקריאס אוי זל צר אך הוא בלי מים באף לעצר אחז כמוס תקצר ואלס לבצר אסיכה מי אבי לין יהיה מצר את האוהלי הפדני מצל מווס אטוסה ואשכונה עד חצר מווס יתאפה לסמחקים למווס אין הם יגיע ויחיה ולא יהיה להם מווס יעלו סי לזוס יתעתי חוזס איו מוסי בכל שנה אי מרס כי השנה הזאת הידע לכל כימוד עזו, ישים לו כי יד יד אינו יעשו זו, זה קוב לך ראש אדן יחידי, כלו לך בנך לך תל מחלי, יחתיך בשביל מי שני מחולי. אך הבן מיתנך כך לי, אל תשכח צעקה שרי אליו לגר יהודה, וישראל אלף אישי ינון, אשר מוסר אלה מרמית אל מציון ישועת ישראל. ישראל מייס בדנוך אלו הלכו עזבוני זדים לפניי מהם נפחו. רגנתי והיללתי מאי ודיבי נשפכו, איכה תפעתי מרי שעשי, מי שעשה השליכו. So the next one we're going to be doing is this, the famous one, איכה תפעתי מרי שעשה השליכו. I'm sure some of you saw that picture that was going around, uh, was it last week? That it was... Um, I think it was, what did they say, 80 years, was it 80 years to the day? I, say, I don't remember exactly of that famous picture that was taken of that Yid, that his tefillin, Ashel Rosh, are split open. How many years ago was it? So 79 years ago to the day, but the day was, it was, it was Zion of when it happened. And you see that picture of what's supposed to be pe'er, glory, which is the tefillin, pe'er, you see that picture, you have tish above every day of your life. And this, this kina, kina tet, you see how this, in this kina, every single sentence opens up kind of like eicha, and each line ends with a certain parsha, with a tzitut, with a quote from a certain parsha. All right, what parsha is it? It's a parsha that we, we get the warnings every year, but we keep on ignoring. Parsha b'chukotai. Where the Torah tells us what will be in b'chukotai te'leichu, and then it tells us, v'ayayim lo tishmauli. What happens when you don't listen to me? What kind of Yiddish guy is that? So when we, again, this word eicha doesn't just mean how could you have done this. Eicha also means could it really be that this actually happened? Could it really be that what we're told happened actually really happened? So, one of the things Hashem is telling us always is always take care when, it, when, when, when we have the concept of the chai bahim, 
ונשמרתם מאוד לנפשסיכם, it doesn't just mean stay alive, it means take care of your beauty. טיפוח, how do you say לטפח? How do you say טיפוח? Anyone know? יודי, איך אומרים לטפח? What's that? Groom yourself. Yeah, huh? call to big. In this context, it's more grooming yourself. The tapech, tipuach atzmi. We have this Indian that uh, our, 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 our beauty, you think, I mean, uh, this is again, we can only say this on Tisha B'Av. What do you think of Yerushalayim? Dov, you're building in Yerushalayim right now. It's beautiful, right? I hate to break it to you. All your avoda that you're working Yom Velayla, day and night, on this beautiful thing in Yerushalayim, is cute. I can only say this because you know this. It's cute and sweet. You know, we built a pretty beautiful shul, right? Isn't Shirat David a beautiful shul? Yeah? It's beautiful? Everyone's scared to answer it. It's, it is. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. It's cute. There's no such thing as beauty in the world since Kurban Abayis. Yeshivas, there more, there's more Talmud Torah today in Eretz Yisrael than there ever was. Isn't it beautiful? It's beautiful. Yet, in terms of, in terms of what beauty really, really is, we don't even understand, we don't understand what beauty is. The world definitely doesn't understand what beauty is. You want all the famous Gemara and Kiddushin, Asara Kabin Shaliofi Yardula Olam. Ten measures of beauty came down to the world. How many went to Yerushalayim? Nine. And one, some say also Yerushalayim, but one not Yerushalayim, the Gemara says. The rest of the world. Kabin shel yofi, measures of beauty. So there's a teaching in Nikutei Maharan, it's in Tinyana, Samech Zayin, where the Rebbe says there, Churban Habayis essentially means Churban Hayofi. Beauty has been destroyed in the world. And that's why a misconception of beauty has been the greatest downfall of man. Specifically in Begama Bris. Things that seem to us to be beautiful are actually the most disgusting, repulsive things that have ever existed in the world. What's called beautiful in today? In today's world, today, the more something's like ugly and shallow and stupid, the more the idea is more shallow and trying to fit a certain a certain genre the more it's so beautiful in the world, in the eyes of the world. But real beauty is meaningless in the world only because we don't have the Makora of Yofi, which was the Beis HaMikdash. I was looking at some Iurim, some, uh, some um, an Iur of the Beit HaMikdash, some uh, illustrations of the Beis HaMikdash. We have so many, I'm sure you have all these, so many of these books that illustrate that they're not coffee table books. These are like Eitz Chaim books. These books that illustrate exactly, yeah, based on Yechezkel, also what, what Bayis Rishon looked like, what Bayis Sheni looked like, and also the best of the ability of those that have worked so hard to try to illustrate what Bayis Shlishi would look like according to Yechezkel and Avi. Now if you look at the Beis HaMikdash, it's, it's, we don't understand even how to look at it because we're also you know, doing based on assumptions. And it's true, you can even go to Machon HaMikdash, to the Temple Institute, and get a little bit of a better understanding chap of, of what it looked like. But the beauty was something much deeper even than what the eyes saw. Although that's also true. Ashrei ayin ra sazos. It's true. What the eyes saw and perceived to be beautiful. It's like after you looked at the base of Migdash, after like even that non-Jew that walked into the base of Migdash for Korban Pesach, he saw a Kohen being a Kohen. The guy's life was changed. David, I'm not talking about all Kohanim. I've never had someone come to me and look at me after Duchening and say to me, this world is so perfect and beautiful. Even the way we Duchen. 
Maybe by you it happened. It never happened to me that, that I had that experience before in this world. So there's a very, very strange midrash that I want to share with you before we say this next kina. Listen to this. This may shape your whole Tisha B'Av. When I read this, it definitely changed things for me. I'm going to read it in English. Translate it into English. A king, someone got je- a king got jealous of his wife. And he thought that she wasn't faithful to him. So he threw her out of the palace. And she was standing outside the palace. And she was sitting by the door. She wouldn't leave the outside of the palace. And whenever the king would come out, whenever he'd leave the palace, she, she, she would see him. And whenever he'd come back, She'd see him, he would see her sitting there. They would see each other, just not where they're supposed to be seen, outside. And the king would say to her, what a chutzpah, I threw you out of here and you're sitting here. Whenever I walk out, you look at me. Whenever I come back, you look at me. She says to him, king, I'm just checking in on you because I don't think any other woman wants you. So he says to her, you know something? I love you so much, and that's why I'm so angry at you, but that because of you, all the other women of the world don't look beautiful to me anymore. So she says to him, then why do you keep on leaving your palace? Aren't you looking for other women? So the Rebona Shalaylam, the Mashal of the Midrash says, the Shem says to Yidin, give out because of you? The whole world doesn't look good to me anymore. And he didn't say back to Hashem, because of you, the whole world doesn't even taste good anymore. Didn't you, uh, didn't you offer your Torah to the rest of the world and no one wanted it? Just us? So it's a very strange Midrash, because this Midrash is, is saying to us, Yerbon um, Shleilam, you threw us out of your palace. Well, we tried to stay close for many years right outside so that you'd see us whenever you'd go for a shpatzir, for a little walk. But now, whether you like it or not, this sounds pretty chutzpah, we came back. We came back because nothing in the world looks beautiful to us. We tried Los Angeles. We tried Woodmere. We tried Chicago. We tried Tui. We tried Skokie. We tried Dallas. We tried Rio de Janeiro, we tried Buenos Aires. We tried Long Beach, we tried, we tried Cleveland, we tried Montreal, we tried Toronto, we tried the beauty of all these other places in the world. We tried St. Louis. We tried the Heilige Ira Kodesh Passaic. We tried the beauty of all these places. Because inside of us, we can't understand it. We know that all the delicacies of the world and all the Carlos and Gabbies of the world doesn't taste good. It doesn't taste good. At a certain point, it doesn't even, these things don't even taste good anymore. Why? Not because I saw the Beis HaMikdash, but because my great, 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 great grandparents did and somehow they put some kind of a juke in my head of what real beauty means, and I just can't stop. I can't, there's nothing I can do about it. So I'm going to stand here. You didn't bring me back into the palace yet. There's no base on Mikdash. But I'm standing here by the entrance to the palace, and, and, and we see each other like this, because there's no other beauty in the world. You, 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 you thought we, Rebona Shleim, you thought we were cheating on you. I know it looked like that. And it looked like that while we had the bias, it looked like we were cheating on you. And I'm sure it looked like 2,000 years of cheating on you with other women. Other women are the places I just mentioned before. I don't see beauty anywhere else in the world, only in Eretz Yisrael. I met an Eretz Yisrael Dikayid last week. I went to go meet, I was, telling, I was telling Yossi and Miriam, I went to go meet the Rav that's been teaching us on Shabbos afternoon, Akitsu Viranenu, Rav Ruven Sasson. 
I met in Eretz Yisrael Dikiyid, the one that's been guiding us through the sense of our tafkid, of being back here, is nothing short than living Geula. Okay? He said to me, with, with pain and embarrassment, he said to me, I, I was only in Chutz Laaretz one, he's, I think he's like my age, maybe a bit older, he said, I was only in America one time. I was only outside of Eretz Yisrael one time a few years ago, and it was very, very hard for me, but I did a cheshbon. He lives in Ramat Sharon, one of the founders of the yeshiva there in Ramat Sharon, And he said that the daughter of, a, of the, his biggest gvir there lives in that neighborhood. And they were dedicating a Sefer Torah in, in, the, in his shul, in the yeshiva in Ramat Sharon, And he, very, he got very close to the guy. His name was, I believe his name was Harvey Cayley. Have any of you heard of Harvey Cayley from Great Neck? Have you heard of Camp Cayley? Camp Cayley. This is Harvey Cayley. Leilui Nishmato. He looked at me and he said, do you know how hard it was for me to, to be able to go outside Eretz Yisrael? I never left Israel. It was so hard for me. It was so difficult for me. And he said, and when I was there, oh my God, it was so hard for me. But I saw a few Yidin in the base Medrash in Great Neck. And they had a pamphlet of one of my Torahs, of Akitzel Virananu. And I saw that Jews that may be in the house of the mistress don't want to be there. And it gave me so much chizuk. It's not that he went back ever again afterwards, but he went, he came back, saw that, like he had to go just for that. Yes, Yofi Ba'olam. There is beauty in the world. But it's only the beauty of longing, of longing for Beis HaMikdash. It's the only beauty there is. There's nothing else. This is what we're mourning. This midrash, this is what we're, this is what we're asking Hashem to drill into us the pain of we don't even know what real beauty is. When we did that video for a meaningful minute, that video about, um, that came out on Shiva Sebetamu's so, in that video, one of the, I forget, I think it was Rav Goldvich, the son of Etl, asked me, he said to me, what's, what's this, mo I don't remember exactly, I think I may be getting two scenes messed up right now, it doesn't matter. <clears throat> Everything's a, a churban. He said, what, what gets to you the most about, about not having the access to go into, beyond those gates of Shari Chulda, where a lot of the footage was taking place? What's the hardest thing? And I had just learned these, these Torahs about Yofi. And I said that the hardest thing is, is that I live in a, in a reality where my children have not yet really seen their father blown away by beauty. That I, I, I live in a world, I brought children into the world. My wife and I had the privilege of bringing children into a world where our children have not really seen us happy yet. Again, this is a Torah you really can only see on Tisha B'Av. But it's true. We know it's true. Our children see us in many different states. children have been, I say this with, with, with utmost pain, our children have been previewed to see their parents spending hours of finding false beauty on devices that are in their hands. Abba, Abba, one second, and I justify it in my mind, this is something I'm doing for them. One second, one second. We run to all these things that think they give us satisfaction because we have no beauty. The beauty of Yerushalayim. And I don't care how many more hotels or even how many more shuls are being built in Yerushalayim. 
we keep on celebrating the fact that in the backyard there's a beautiful new piece of furniture. When we talk about Binyan Yerushalayim, you want to you want to have you want to have an easier time with Nachim that's coming up in Mincha. I'll give you an easier time. This is it, an easier time with Nachim. You want to give someone a display of your home and you take them to the beautiful, beautiful pools that are on the outside or the beautiful steps leading up to the house. Gorgeous. Look at this. Look at this. You want to show them, wow, this mezuzah belonged to the Baba Sali. You put it in the mezuzah for the kitchen. And this, this menorah belongs, somehow you got access to the menorah of Rabbi Leimanach of Lejansk. And it's by the it's by the, I don't know, by the Svarim. And you, you show a person room after room after room, and then the person says, it's clear to both of you, there's one room he hasn't, you know, the Baal Bayit hasn't shown you. And uh, you say, oh, I want to go into this room. And the Baal Bayit says, no, you can't go into that room. Why? My wife is in there. Oh, she's not Sneas? Um, not Sneas. There's someone else in there with her right now. That is still happening right now as you and I are sitting here building Eretz Yisrael. You want to just forget about the tar- the, the tefillah of Nachim that's coming up at Mincha? But the kitchen is just beautiful. The island is magnificent. And the Sfarim, the Sfarim are, what a collection of Sfarim. And this Shabbos table is so long and beautiful and glamorous and it's all true and it makes me feel good for every day of the year but on Tisha B'Av those things don't mean anything to me because I'm sitting on a floor fasting busy giving excuses to my children why, why we're not opening the bedroom door You gotta sit with that for a few seconds on Tisha B'av, with all the pain that's that's in there. That's it's very very heavy stuff. It's very heavy stuff. But as far as I know, as crazy as us Jewish people have been over the years, I still think that the consensus says that the bedroom is where the bedroom is, unless there's a new group. They've tried it in Berlin, Little Jerusalem, but I, I don't think the location has been, uh, you know, re, um, you know, the location has been officially removed to another place. So if us Yidin, that are so clear about where the bedroom is, how do we live a life with the explanation that we just said right now? Unless we're just living in denial that that's not actually happening. So some Yidin will say, what are you trying to be proactive to go up to Harabait? Forget that. That's not even the sugiya right now. The sugiya is who is controlling the bedroom and who is allowing who to be in the bedroom. Cheder Hamitos. So that's why on Tisha B'Av, I, I just, I, I rid myself of all those things that make me happy during the year. All those moments of like Jewish pride and building stuff. And, uh, 
the, these, the, the shuls we built, the schools we built, the, the, all the achievements we have on Tisha B'av don't mean anything because of what we just said. Which makes Tisha B'av infinitely more painful than before 1948. Infinitely more painful. Mele, you could say, look, I'm not the Baalabite. What could I do? The land, the house saw foreclosure. Rabbi Yisai and Gvirotai, either we're here, either we're back in our home, or we're not back in our home. This middle ground is Tishabav. This is Tishabav. First words in this kina, Echa tif arti, my tif eret, my beauty, mirashotai hishlichu. That literally means my tefillin were ripped off from my head and thrown onto the ground. But it means everything else we said in here so far go under this kina of lost beauty and how much I've convinced myself that I can keep on going on in life with moments of dreams that still lead me to sitting on the floor on a hot day in the summer, where I realize that all the beauty that I think I've, I've come in contact with in my life is, is nothing. It's nothing. At least for the next few hours, it's nothing. Eicha tifayti mirashotai shlichu. כי לא בא פה ויאסתמני ניחום אב מירא ישא שונין בדרום קנה בלא מיקציר ובייחס חלף שארים היציר מזיר אב אס בקציר תמור יסיק לכם דאיש אז בציר דורח קאש תומך ואיי, <laughs> כי תורחו פה סולה כרכיב שם, ושאלו איי דוגון תמורו ואכלתם ישן נושן. טוב וניחסו לדבי דוכני בגי חומס ידר נכני. הרי כמה שנים גיל היסוד מכוני ושם מתוך ימר ונסעתי משכנים. יושבו ואקים מנהג מדייכם, ורבה מידי סיפיר מדייכם. חרב ורב וחיה ודבר שיחסכם, כסער צילם פת ויסולח לכם. כלו לשוית כרגע עליכם וכן נשבום עליכם. לחיכם נשפכו נפשו עשו עליכם. במעשכם שיח אני עדינה אליכם, לימסם קלקום אנא שיבו וצורי למלאכה ופסק מני שהוא ארץ הכרמל וסמי שהוא שאו ושמנו מחייך ואם לא יש לשמעו מה ידך יזרח מגולך וסוסו ואם לי מר סוס ננוס על כן נסו נראי סין נסו ונעשיכם כי הוא מרסו ויעשיכם כי גם די מחוגסי תימסו נביאה יכתעו אותה משב חזייס וידרוס נסלח ופצתי עד לזייס פליזים כנגדי ישיבו הזייס וענפתי ושחי ושחתי אף אני אעשה זייס ספקו חלקו שלקו מעיניי פנים בחוץ לעצמי סמוני כי בני זיד ימחנו צפוני לרעה ולא טובה נס ונצאת פניי פה צוזית לפני מי תכלי תחילה תחלה עם כבד עוון פקוד ויהי לאל ושיחקו רגע למביס ופלא ענף ונסו ונעם באים עד אלה עושה ויהיה כעת קוד נשם ולמי שיקרני בגי צימון וכל שנה ושנה סביר גונל און מעז כס נס שם לא עד יסגאון צעקה יבייש פסק נקבל בבית בלי לב גמרי 
ובלהגי מרק שיני צלם חלק מחדר בני מנהל ומנהל חמלה ליקום מדרף קישה וילדמי אוזני רב מארץ כל נח ואימי מי אמר שישכני ואת מי חדשה חינוך חי בני אימי ואם תלכי אימי לאגו לאלי ויסון סם דלי מלייס ונקס מדבר יסיד מויאס גוי לאז כנויאס ולא כנויאס ושמיד וישלח לי מלכם אס חייאס שוח ובי דוב כזה מכמר ואין דולה אם לאים גר ואין מר פעולה הרי כמה שנים הממנית התקלה אנשים וויכוח מי בי ילדים תקרא אלה לאט על אדמי ניר וסחפו לשעס פרשי וסיים כעוני תהום צלעי ברצינס כל מר מר אני כנען העום מביא בלי בלח לי אף אני אף אני לחוד ביו כשיבורן אוהב ושים חביש בי צוהלו אני רוצה שווה גבר גבר איך ישבה The next kina, kina Yud, speaks about the gvura, the gvura of the Kohanim. Also the pain of the Kohanim. But this is a, this is a, a wondrous moment in the keynote, because it commemorates the 24 Mishmaras Kehuna that served in the Beis HaMikdash. And each stanza here ends with about one of these Mishmarot Kehuna. You know, if you think about it, what took, what took the Romaim so long to, 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 to destroy the Beis HaMikdash? Think about it. When did it start? Shiva Sebetamuz. When did it end? Tisha B'av. Let me ask you, Chavre. Did it ever take you three weeks to walk from Mamila to the Kotel? And let's say, okay, that there's an, a little army there that's in your way. If you're the Romans, right? If you're the Romans... How does it take you three weeks to get from Mamila to the Kotel? Ech ze cholliot. Right? See, against, against the Kohan, you have to understand also the Kohanim that were there, they were the ones in the Beis Hamid, they were the last push, the last push of the enemies to not come in and end the game. They're starving. Have any of you read any of the testimonies that, that people left over? from the time of the Matsor over the Ira Atika, the siege over the Old City, not the siege of, of Shiva Sebe Tammuz, the siege that took place 60, 70 years ago. Any of you read about how, how much the Yidin were starving? They were, the, 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 the death toll just because of starvation was, was crazy. The starvation of the Kohanim, and yet their, their gvura, it's something, it kind of gets, not just because I'm a Kohen I'm saying this, but it, it, it kind of gets, it is a little bit underrated. The Gvura of the Kohanim is something else. And I wanted, to, I wanted to just speak about one of these, one of the Giborim, one of the Kohanim Giborim. This will take, this is just to, to quote two things. When I think of a Kohen that suffered, it's very easy for me to go to a certain name that, that pops out. Rabbi Yishmael Kohen Gadol. Let's talk about Rabbi Yishmael Kohen Gadol for a second. And what a gibor he was, and what a churban chilol Hashem happened to him. Because his description is one of the hardest ones, as you all know already. We say this kind of, not quickly, but when half the kahal is shlufing on Musaf of Yom Kippur, and really it's only the chazan that says these words, when he talks about the Hasara Harugay Malchut, about the ten holy martyrs. But I have, uh, I have here the description of the last day of Rabbi Yishmael Kohen Gadol in this world. You know, for Rabbi Yishmael Kohen Gadol, just to, to give you a little bit of context, you know kind of a Hayalig and Neshama he was. His mother toveled, his mother toveled 80 times on the day that he was conceived. His mother was Nishmar, from, she was such an Ishak Dosha. The, the descriptions of, of how he came into the world are really incredible. But for today, I want to go to the end, the last day of his life. Chazal tell us that when the Romans were about to kill him, and he was amongst the ten holy martyrs. So we all know that he was, talk about beauty, he was beautiful. How beautiful was he? Well, he was so beautiful that... The daughter of the Caesar wanted him to stay alive only because he had such a beautiful face. But they came to a, uh, they came to a maskana that they'll shecht him, but she'll still be able to enjoy the beauty. 
How? You, you all know what happened to his face. Hafshatas <laughs> or, you know, we have halachas when it comes to, uh, when it comes to um, the, the skin of animals, right? Hafshatas <laughs> or. We don't have any halachas about the skin of human beings, right? You know, according to the uh, Amora Shmuel, <laughs> he said that, that the Goyim had a, uh, they had a ho- special holiday every 70 years where they would take that f- the skin, the, that face of Rabbi Shmuel Kohen Gadol, and they would put it upon a person and he would Yakivu Birchovo Ta'ir. You know, they scraped his face off very, very Germanly. Very meduyak. And this holiday, that the face of Rabbi Shmuel Kohen Gadol was put on someone else, some other, some other menuvel, and he would parade through the cities. You know what that holiday was called? It was called Gvuras Esa Val Yaakov. It was a holiday, and there was a holiday. I don't think they celebrate that form of it anymore. There's other ways where the Gevura of Esav over Yaakov is being celebrated in the world. America is very chazak with this, celebrating this holiday. But can you imagine an actual holiday where the face of the Kohen Gadol is you see it on the face, you see it on the body of someone else that's riding through the city and it's called the Gevura of Esav on Yaakov? This happened in the world that we live in, you realize that? What are some of the tayalach of Rabbi Shmuel Kohen Gadol for this to get into our bones of what was shechted? What was shechted with Churban Abayas? Everyone knows how important it is not to judge. We have so many different teachings. In Gemara Brachos it says, Im ra'ita tamich hacham she'avar avera balayla, al teharera harav bayom, because of the famous three words, Shema, Asa Tshuva. If you saw someone sinning at night, you see him the next morning, don't attribute his identity to what you saw the night before. Because what? A Yid has to live with these three words in his heart always. Shema Asa Tshuva. He may not be the same person because you never know when a Yid is going to feel Tshuva. And you have to live with that reality with us at all times. Whose statement was that? That's Rabbi Shmuel Kohen Gadol's statement. What a world. Shema Asa Tshuva. That would be an amazing name of a kolo. Now that I think about it. Or even a shu. Shema Asa Tshuva. Shema Asta Tshuva. We have a tefillah. We have a tefillah. Mm-hmm. A very important tefillah from Rabbi Shmuel Kohen Gadol. But I just want to say out loud before we read this next kina about Mishmar Asa Kehuna. And it said about this tefillah. It's a very, very long tefillah. I'm just doing one paragraph. It says about the tefillah of this tefillah of, of, of Rabbi Shmuel Kohen Gadol that if you stay, if you just allow these words to penetrate inside of you, you, you can't be the same person afterwards. What are these words? This is just one, one paragraph from Rabbi Shmuel Kohen Gadol, from a gibor, Rabbi Shmuel Kohen Gadol. In my home, may there be shalom bayis. There shouldn't be screaming in my home. When I look at the world, may I look at it with the light of life. Rabbi 
והפר כל עצת אויבי ומלא כל משאלותיי לטובה, ככתוב, ייתן לך כלבביך וכל עצתך ימלא. חלצני אדוני מאדם רע, מאיש חמסים תמצרני. שמע אדוני וכונני, אדוני היה עוזר לי. שיהיו עמי לעזור ולהועיל ולהושיע ולהציל. שובה אדוני חלצה נפשי, הושיעני למען חסדיך, ואתה שלום וביתך שלום, וכל אשר לך שלום. קינה יוד. איכה ישבה חבצרת השלום. בית הממלון מפי נושאי אלון. ונאו ממשמונותם כהנים בני אהרון, כי נמצא על הבית מסביב מלון. בכה תבכה מחומשת צפנים, כי נהרא הכהן בן אבי ביום הכיפורים. ועל דמו נשחטו פרחים כצפילים, ונדו כציפורים כהני ציפורים. גרת מארצך קל המקושתה, בעוון מעשרות ושמיטה, ובארבעת שפטים ושפטה, ומדיה ופשטה. משמרת מפשט הדר חי איכה שמו כנפרץ קוטלו. ועמיל כי נקרבתי לו, ורד ואשפל מיתי לו, ונעם איש לי לו, כהן הייתה לו. היו אויבים מלאיבים בלוחמי לחם, כי ביטלו הלא פרוס ולב ללחם, ורבו ותמו מים עם הלחם, כי ביטלו שתי הלחם מבית לחם. ויצא הדר עם כבה בכסף, נחפס, ותמונתו יפה על ראש שלך יפס. ונאי לא זניח בו מנורה נכפת, כבושו בלחם. ופעת נלכדו נלכדה יו, ופעת זוכרה זמן אשר נעשה, ונשמע ושיבו. ועתה ענות אמן לא אבו לנה ולוש צורו ורבו והוא קצוב ולבו כהני עלבו חית חטא ואמרה לי לזל והלעיגה ותהייתה בחוזי אל עבור כן וקנה במרגיז יעל ויצא עם העון אל כפר עוזי אל טומאת האכניפה תבל ונעלה רב החובר וענען אבק רגליו כאב ומצרע במרני על בידו פרסה בבי זבול כי יכלה יחו יאף וגדל מבו כיסו אישית וחיבול וניבו ויצא גבל גבול כהן גבול כה אמר כוננו קינה, כי הכיסו לאל קנה וגויין מן אבו ואל תם קינה, בן אדם מכאן למשפט ישראל קנה, לא למה לא מעין צפת, כזה מלך ויש מלך מלך, ובחיזוק מוצר בעד מרץ מן לבעד, כהן צפת מלוא משמיע, נראה סיטן ויקן עמי במשיגון, כד עלי אבו מלא וגיבון, ונעם אמון משפט ישבייס, כהן מעון, נשקד על אבון וניחב גושב, כי נעמי בלי אב, נמען נרצף ונמין גוגם, נשא עלי קינה משמר יש מעט. צילה בירה עם עליה, יבוא נזכר עליה, כדי למרות בלוע מרד ובלוע צורה כאלה מביאה משמרת מריה, על גבי חלשו חולשים, וניחו מעני אז בין יגרו ליחי וחניס, ואת יצום בסטנית, מצוי אז תבנית, יצא יוונית, פן סוף עניין שולח כי נאמינה, ואש כי משולח, בוש בשר בלי סמלח, ואין שמן מולה בראש פעמלח, צדיקו עדין הגיפי ומרץ, ואור רוע רוע די יסוד בא הוא הרס, ותמור עוזים וזים רס, כי נמודה נחרס, ואושרתי לשם ורבו בי אמס תל חביו ענת אבי סחביו שמו כי נזרתי מצחנה תתה מנת חינה ולתה מלחמי ולחמי 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 the next kina that we have, this is a kina that's basically, uh, according to most, is, is, the, is kind of like the base of all kinot. The famous kina, Vayikonen Yirmiyahu al Yoshiyahu. The kina of Yirmiyahu over, over Yoshiyahu. Yoshiyahu is from base David. There was never, after David HaMelech, there was no greater tzaddik, no such great holiness like Yoshiyahu. And this kina is dealing with an interesting halacha that's come up, unfortunately, many times over the years. And it happened again 17 years ago after the Khurban of Gush Katif. And that question is, should another day be set aside over a certain tzara that happens to Am Yisrael? Or does kind of everything fall under Tisha B'Av? And obviously this came about as well after the Shoah. Rav Moshe Feinstein, all the post of that generation had to deal with this Shaila. But it actually, it actually based on a Rashi in Divrei Hayamim, the answer was no. 
You don't make another Tisha B'Av. Why? So, a little bit of a description. Choose your favorite place in Yerushalayim. Now, now let me rephrase. Yerushalayim of the time of the Khurban, do you know where Yerushalayim, do you know how big Yerushalayim was? Do you know where Yerushalayim was? Everyone knows that Yerushalayim in the time of the Khurban was basically a little area that is today where you have what they call Silwan, Kfar Shiloh, Kerem Ateimanim, where that used to be 100 years ago. Yerushalayim was just south of the Mokam Migdash in that area. So when we speak about spillages and Nahar of blood, it makes a lot of sense because that area south, it kind of pours downward. It's a descent. So it may, you, could, you could understand when they say that there is, you know, rivers of blood flow, flowing through Yerushalayim. Forget about Harnof and Bayit Bagan for a second and all the beautiful areas that are now part of Yerushalayim. But it really does make sense that it flowed down into Yerushalayim because Yerushalayim, the city was basically a Kli Kibul. It was a receptacle for the Mokkah Migdash, for the place of the Migdash. Vayikonen Yirmiyahu al Yoshiyahu. Yoshiyahu was shechted. Okay? His, his, his murder, his brutal murder is, 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 is Ayom Venora. But when, while, while Yirmiyahu Hanavi was crying over Yoshiyahu, so there's an interesting pasuk in Divrei Ayamim Bey, it's towards the end of Tanakh, where it says there that Vayit name lechok. What does Rashi say? Vayit name lechok. This was given to us like a chok. Vayikonen Yirmiyahu Yoshiyahu, meaning the pain over what Yirmiyahu was feeling over Yoshiyahu, which basically was the pain of the whole story. Rashi says like this: Kshemizdamen lahem shum tsar ubchia, shehem mekonenim ubochim ala meora. Whenever Jews will have to be in pain. By the way, Rashi. What was Rashi's life like? Was it like Yom Atzmaut or was it like Tisha B'av? Where was Rashi? We'll talk about it soon, where Rashi was. Rashi says that whenever you didn't have to go through a thing that demand of them that, that they feel the need to cry, Hem maskirim ze hatsar imo. They always bring this tsar of the kina of Vayikonen Yirmiyahu al Yoshiyahu. Dugma betisha b'av. כשמזכירים קינות על ההרוגים בגזרות שיראו בימינו, כן יפקיון על מות יושיהו, דוגמה ותהי חוק בישראל. לתנוס ליבה, סורי, ותהי חוק בישראל. Whenever Jews suffer, you don't have to create new yontivs over it. Why? It, everything's contained within Tisha B'av. Now, even the stuff that we're going to be seeing soon with the keynote that we're going to be seeing, that Kiv Yochal have nothing to do with Tisha B'av. Tisha B'av said it was like a fixed time for everything else to fall under this umbrella. What happened with this Vayikonen Yirmiyahu al Yoshiyahu? Well, the best thing I could, I, could, I could do is to ask you to have an imagery of a Zaka worker. Think about a day in the life of a Zaka worker that gets called to have to do his Avodas Kodesh Kodeshim. Right? What does a Zaka member have to do? Shelo Neida. As a Kohen, I, I'm not allowed to be one. I would have to be one if no one else is there, like with the, the, with the Mace Mitzvah. But this is a world that I can't, I can't understand, how people, human beings, could, could live like this, can act like this, in a holy way. I saw, I saw a Jew, that for him, the whole base, the whole... Tisha B'Av has to be canceled out for. You know what it was? I saw a Zaka worker two nights before Rosh Hashanah saying Slichas at the Kotel. It was a very, very special night. That night, I was by my, my dear friend Moish Geller's house in Nachlaot. And that night, I, I composed the Nigun V'Hakohanim. I felt it was in the air. Slamish in the air. And I said, I gotta go down to, I, I have to go down to Daven by the Kosa. So I went down to the Kotel, and I started davening, but I couldn't, I couldn't focus because I saw a Zaka worker that just came from a scene. 
He just came from picking up pieces of a yid. And he's coming, he was farty. I saw him screaming. I have that in me. It'll, Be'ez HaShem, never ever leave me. Those people are coming and screaming, Chatanu lefanecha rachem aleinu, a Zaka worker, what they have to do? Well, Yirmiyahu Hanavi was one of the first Zaka workers that we know, Zaka volunteers, I shouldn't say worker, Zaka volunteer that we know. What did Yirmiyahu Hanavi do? The Midrash tells us, on every revi'is of blood that he gathered up from pouring out of Yoshiyahu, he said a kina. Every fourth amount, uh, revi'is, it's a measurement of blood that came out of him, he gathered it up somehow and said a kina. So you see Rashi is telling us when someone's experienced such a thing like that in the world before and he's picking up bag after bag or towel after towel if you if you ever been to a terrorist uh, to a to a a leviah of someone that was killed in terrorism you'll see that you'll understand the following description there was one that I was able to get kind of close to. When I was 15, there was a girl in my class whose brother was killed in Vadi Kelt. You know where Vadi Kelt is? It's by Yericho. This kid was a tzaddik. 19-year-old precious gem. Tishtapechna avne kodesh. Mamish. Bnei Tzion hayekarim. This was like a Ben Tzion. His name was Uri. Uri Shachor from Ranana. And this boy was finished Shana Aleph in Yeshiva at Merkaz Arav. And together with a friend of his from Yeshiva, a very holy Jew named Ohad Bachrach from Beit El, they decided to go and do a tiul ben azmanim. They decided to go down to Vadi Kelt. Um, I haven't been there in years. I don't know if any of you have been there recently. But back then, basically, the trek led you on the bottom that you could tovel inside in the water. After a nice... A nice hike. And Nebuch, Uri and Ohad, as they were toveling, when they were coming out, their lives were taken by Yishmael. I think all he had on was his tzitzis. Because I saw his tzitzis be put in the grave with him. Because they were red tzitzis. Tzitzis were red. Mamash. So you have in this in this kina tishta pechna avne kodesh below kol chutzos. We 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 have seen already oceans of Jewish blood being spilled, and we've been convinced after we've witnessed such horrible things that the narrative has changed, the game has changed, everything will be different now. And somehow we're back here in Tishba Vaikonen Yirmiyal Yoshial. Did any person in this room think that life would be the same after that fateful morning where Ari Fold was killed? Two minutes from here? Try to go back to the morning when you heard he was killed. Try to remember to see if you can remember your thoughts. What were you thinking? Was there a part of you that thought that life would be the same? That life will just, that the traffic will be the same? That, or did, or would, did we think that, and there's, there's, a, there's a game changer here that we can't, uh, it can't be the same thing anymore. And, and, and somehow, this, the oceans of Jewish blood that are being spilled and life goes on is a continuation of this kina, Vayikonen Yirmiyahu al Yoshiyahu. So as we're saying it right now, we're, we're, this kina, this is the basis for the rest of the kinos that we're gonna say 
where we've kind of allowed ourselves to live the reality that things like that can happen and somehow life still goes on. But not in a good way. By Konen Yirmiyal Yoshial. This is Kina 11. By Konen Yirmiyal Yoshial. Eicha Eli Konen Omeela Ben Shmone Shana Echel Yedrosh Meloav Bnei Cham Be'ovram Chanu Alav Ela Uska Lo Shtigui Mifalav Gam Bechol Malchi Yisrael Asher Kamu Ligdor Lo Kam Kamo Mimos Avigdor Dovak Bochet Litzone Hador Asher Kamu Achar Adelas Lisdor Ha'o Yichlim Zara Shichar Kis Mu'ato Pichom Amishchor Vayigdor Ovan Veishiv Yom Min Achor Ve'od Lo Shalach Yedom Min Achor Zaku Amarav Kenam Das Lakim ביצועים לא עשה בנו של יקים, חושך תלו כי נצאו לחוקים. בבצע מועשי דס וחוקים טובים ורעים נקראו בשם חום מלאך. מה לי בלך היום לסלח ידי עם ארץ דמים ומלאך. תענש בביצים אז פני פלאך, כי לעם עיניי לכס על הנעליים למען לא יתאב על חלב כושר באפרים. לא שמע לך חוזר לשום אחוריים, כי גזירה נגזרת, וסחזק מצרים מצרים, מיכתו הסתירס מזוז חזן מצרים, מתחילו ולבז אז נועה נמי מלכו מרב זה יס. מלוא אעשה פנה וסמדו על זה, סורו אינו עד לא שאייה, ויימנו סומת יסוד נשיה, פני קרב כקרב ולא עשה לרטייה, ויורו המורים למלך יושיע, עודנו עצם עיניו בגבי בגמרים לוחצים, חץ אחר חץ מורים ולוחצים צדו וסמו, כמטרה לחיצים, וסגו בשבוש מזחיצים. כל אם צוצצו אחריו בזמן מועצה פיהו ועד מצרי נפש מעשה יפיחו ותהיו רוח שפה סביב צורם פיהו צדיק ועד נקים רסי פיהו סיסי נעת כי כן עזם ושלם שאין הבא במביצם תם קסם הטוב ומצאו בפה שם מכונן אליו כל איך היו עם תם המקרה אחד כוס מגידו להשתתף מבית שנת זה שמיתה כגר כגר לנדס תהלה בעשרים ושתיים ארץ שתס כי סוף ודו לא איכו בעשרים ושתיים איסי איס אז הזכינה אז דיברת ומכל יעז, כי שכחתי מכל יעז, אמרתי כי לעד יעלי, רשעתי ונוסעתי ונוטש אוהלים. It's not easier. Im tochal nanashim piriam odalei tipuchim. Very, very, very intense phrase we have from Eicha. Im tochal nanashim piriam. This is a very, very intense one. And I already asked Mechila from those that, I mean, if you're still here, it means you... You want it drilled in hard. So we're going to drill this last one in, this, this kina in really, really hard. One of, the, one of the most gruesome descriptions of what Churban Yerushalayim was, was the hakshama, was the, the um, actualizing of a klala that we see in the Torah, I think in Parshat Kitavu. And that is... Chas v'shalom, parents eating their own children. Yes, we live in a world where this has happened. And it's even happened amongst Am Yisrael. So, I heard this from my Rebbe from Rav Weinberger. This is a... This is a story that happened towards the end of the war. We were talking about it on Shabbos a few weeks ago, the Shailas and Shuvas, the Shailas that came up during World War II. It's crazy. Cra- to me, one of the biggest pelas is that people actually had halachic Shailas during the war. I just can't believe it. They actually had halachic questions during the war. Lo yuman. So there was a Rav, he was a Rav in, in Tel Aviv. He made it out, Rav Ehrenstein. He is known as the Dvar Yeshua. And this is a Gaon Sheba Gaonim that experienced Gehenom, he experienced hell in this world. What is, what kind of hell? Listen to this, listen to this question that came to him. So, this is now where, where it's, to give you the context, it's the end of the war. It's actually the last few days of World War II. And a question came to him. What was the question? 
Yeah, first of all, you should know that the, the, for some people, the end of the war was for some people more hell than all the years together that they ever went through. Because at that last few days of the war, the Germans knew it was over, so they just tried to kill as many as possible, as fast as possible, in the most gruesome ways as possible. And the Germans were on the run, and when they're on the run, who do they take with them on the run? They take with them the prisoners, they're with them on the run. And some prisoners, some Jewish prisoners were schlepped with them. And they, they surrounded them and kept them in, in, an, in an open field somewhere. And they weren't letting, they weren't giving the Yidin anything to eat. There was nothing to eat anymore. But at least the, the Yidin, the, the Jews were thankful that at least they could pluck from the grass. Even though the Gestapo told the Jews that whoever gets caught doing this will get killed right away. Now, listen how sick the German society was. The Germans, the non-Nazis, right? The Germans, let's say there was like a German left that had a little bit of chemla in his heart. So he, they were angry, these field owners were angry that Jews are now sitting and ruining their crops or whatever was on those, these fields, right? And they were very upset with the Nazis that they brought the Jews dafka to there because it would ruin them for the, for the cattle. That, that's, remember what we said in the first Kina? We've become suru suru tame, right? So a question came to this Rav Ehrenstein. This is such a, such a backwards world. The question was that the, since there are dead Yidin lying there that had been killed because they were caught taking grass or they just died from they just died. The Shaila was, are you allowed to eat the flesh of those that you're dying from? Why? From else what? Well, if this can keep someone alive, are you allowed to eat? Are you allowed to eat? The Bishop of Ehrenstein begins to shake and tremble when this question comes before him. Of course, his heart is completely broken that he's living in a world where these are the Shilas that he came to him. Just imagine. He goes back six, seven years. He has Shilas of, is this, is this chicken kosher? Is there an Eruv that's set properly? And now the Shaila he's asked is, can we eat this person to stay alive? And the person that, that asked the question emphasized that they know they're about to die. And they even, there was a doctor there. And they asked the doctor that was present, the Yiddish doctor, saying, tell me, if this person doesn't eat this flesh right now, will they, will they die? He said, yeah. And if they eat the flesh right now of this deceased person, will they be able to stay alive? And the doctor said that, in fact, hundreds of lives could be saved if, if there's a heter to do this right now. Remember, it's the end of the war. This is the description of what's going on. And Rav Ernstein said that he couldn't bear the thought that after everything certain Jews went through, that they shouldn't hold out for a few more days and stay alive. I'm going to tell them now that it's Usr, after the hell they went through, that after five years, six years of Gehenna, now they're going to be told, you got to just die? When there's maybe a suffix of them being able to be alive? I know, this is a twisted, what a twisted reality, right? So the Rav himself felt that he couldn't go on. And he, and he was terrified by this question. He began to cry. And, he, and, and, and the people that were wit there witnessed him saying, Ribbon Shleim, you just take my life right now. I, I, I can't, I, just take me. I can't answer a question like this. What a level, how can I pass him to eat human flesh? What, what if, the, where have we come to? How could I pass him to go to such a, what is this? So, what was his tshuva? Listen to this. He says that Al-Pidin, halachically, he can't argue and say that it's us. How could he, how could he say it's us? Right? And he said, we've seen this before. In the time of Churban Beis Migdash, Jews reached this level too. Im tochal na nashim piryam. And he said that he's afraid that since the situation is so desperate, what is that going to end up happening? If he says yes, then Yidin 
out of desperation to stay alive, are going to kill other Yidin that are about to die so that they could stay alive. Right? They'll kill the weakest and the most sick and they'll actually do it because of my heter. This is the mind of a Talmud Chacham while he's in hell. Isn't that amazing? Forget about the circumstances for a second. Just think of the mind of the tzaddik while he's placed in Gehenom. What a, what a wild thing. What a wild thing. So, he says, I have, I have another Nekuda in my tshuva, that this is also, this will bring a lot of hana to the SS officers. This will bring them a lot of enjoyment if they see such a skept, you know, spectacle. And, and they'll have now a new accusation. Ha, we were right. Jews really are cannibals, right? And they'll start murdering every single one of us since they're very cultured and cultured people kill cannibals. Now, this last svara was accepted even by the Jew who asked the question, who felt like he was going to die. And he paskin that it's asur. Because of the two reasons he gave, he said it's asur. An hour later, the SS got an order to transport everyone there to Transenstadt. And, who, and whoever was there, while the Shaila was asked, was saved. Because the war ended about a day and a half later. The, the, there's a lot to say about this tshuva. Not, 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 not just the tshuva, there's a lot to say about this story. There's a lot to say about this reality. Um, it's amazing how we, we, before 1939, we read things like Im Tochan and Nashim Piryam, and we're like, wow, it's impossible to relate to such a thing. And then six years later, that's exactly what their story is. And here we are, 80 years later, not 2,000 years later, 80 years later, and that story seems absolutely impossible to be part of our mitzvahs. Rav Soloveitchik would explain the machloket between the Rambam and I'm forgetting who else, what the Avelis of Tisha B'av is. The Avelis of Tisha B'av is, oh, the Shaila was like this. Was there Tisha B'av in Bai Cheney? We learned this once a few years ago. What, what was Tisha B'av and Bayi Cheney? Did they have a fast day? What was it? So the Rav explained, no, they did have, Tisha B'av and Bayi Cheney existed, but it wasn't crying over what was, but it was being petrified that they would lose now that which they have. So as much to put things into context, as much as we learn a halachic tshuva like this, the analysis of what a tzaddik has to go through in such dire circumstances, such craziness, right? Where before they went through this, they would have never fathomed that they'd ever have to use their minds and the Torah they learned to answer such a question, at least not in 2,000 years. Boom. It happened. It happened in the last century. I don't, God forbid, I'm not trying to scare anyone. I'm trying to just point out the kina that we're about to say right now. If you're trying to attach yourselves to Kinot, we're sitting here, my phone keeps on buzzing, the bombs keep on being sent every few minutes all over Eretz HaKodesh. And we're sitting in here and we're trying hard to connect to something that's not so far away. There's plenty, like I said before, that's right there in our midst. I mean, chas v'chalila, chas v'shalom, this Kina should never, ever, ever be in our midst. But it was in our midst. We're, we're just the next generation after the Holocaust. It was in our midst. Kina Yud Zayin, Im Tochan Nashim Piryam, Ol Leiti Puchim Alalai Vim, Im Tolashel Nanashim Rachman Yos Yeladim Amedudim Tvachim Tvachim Alalai Vim, Im Tog Im Tigozna Peas Rosham Betikshayna Lesusim Porchim Alalai Vim. אם תדבק לשון יונק לחיך בצימון צחיך עם על הלילי אם תאמן הזו לאום הזו בואי נבש על זמננו צורכים על הלילי אם תבעד נזו לזו תני בנך והוא חבוי מנתח לתוכים 
אם תינוס נא למסך יחל שמונים אלף קונים פרוחים על לילי. אם תסולף נשם כל עושם הנפושות כקוצים כסוכים על לילי. אם תערף נא על דם נקי שמונים אלף קונים משוכים על לילי. אם תפח נא נפושות מדוכרים מלך תבונות נבזיכים על לילי. אם תצווה נא לבן אחס תשעה קרים נוח ילדים מונחים על לילי. אם תוכר נא שלוש מס יונקים על שלושה אחס מסוכים על לילי. אם תלע אין אלא כוס וענוג אז כבודו סגר דרב טבחים עלי לי אם תשוכב נא בין שפתיים בנוס ישראל משובחים עלי לי אם תסלף נא בזוז בחמון ציבור נצחיכים עלי לי ורוח הקודש למול המרים היה על כל שכינה הרעים מה שכי כמה מועדים ואיזה אשר עשו למדים עד תוכל נשים פרי המשמיעים ואם יהיה הרג המקדש על עיני כהן ולא ולא משמיעים Okay, the next keynote we're going to do, I, I really, I'm sorry about this last one, I just, I was debating all week if we're going to say it, but it is what it is. The next keynote we have, L'cha Hashem HaTzedakah, we're going to do Kina, Kina Yutet, the 19th Kina. The 19th Kina is speaking about paying our bills, it, it's talking about Tzidok Adin. That part of confronting Hashem and saying, yeah, things got really bad. Things right now have gotten really bad. I got to get my act together. So at the end of Gemara Yuma, there's a famous discussion there about what the proper nusach of vidui is. And Rav Huna has a very famous one. We say it on Rosh Hashanah. We say it on, uh, on Yom Kippur. Elokai, at shelo notzarti. That's, that, that version of Vidui is basically saying, um, you know, not feeling worthy of being alive. What's the lesson there? I think that's the, that's the lesson. We refer to ourselves like a kli that's we're filled with busha. <laughs> Actually, to even refer to yourself as a kli that's filled with busha is already a level because. Some people are kalim and there's nothing in there. So at least if there's busha in there, there's something in there, right? Lanu boshe sapanim. We say this in slichos. It's to us. To us is, is the busha. It's not your fault. And this kina that we're going to say now goes through so many different failures of generations that almost had it and messed up. Almost had it and messed up. This kina is basically saying, Ibono she'olam, I mean, this is like our kina today, like we came back, we're building Eretz Yisrael, like, Lanu Boshe Sapanim, please, please don't take it away from us. All year long, you would never, you would never say these words during the year, because what do you mean? Look how beautiful everything is, we're here to stay, and it, we've seen already in our history, Zelah Sipur, Zelah Sipur. On Tisha B'Av, you realize, Mamad Zelo HaSipur. You know, we, we, the, the, the kina that, we dis, that we're going to say right now, it's a very power, powerful kina, where we say Hashem was more than giving with us, and, and yet we messed up. We messed up dafka in moments of such beauty. That's why one of the, one of the explanations of like, the word Vayihi, in the beginning, of, as the first word in Parshat B'Shalach, Vayihi is Lishon Tsar. Why are you saying Vayihi b'shalach paro ta'am? What a beautiful simchadik moment it is. It should have said, instead of Vayihi, what should have it said? Vehaya, that's Lashon Simcha. It said Vehaya b'shalach paro ta'am. No, we say Vayihi b'shalach paro ta'am. Vayihi. Leaving, leaving Mitzrayim. And they had an image of how, what it would be like. And when it actually happened and it didn't meet their expectation, they got depressed. So for them it was a moment of Vayihi. Vayihi b'shalach paro ta'am. 
because the Jews were much less impressed about how it ended up, how it ended up being. Shlomo used to say that's what happens with many marriages. Sometimes you look at, at, at your wedding, at your wedding album, and you're you're in so much pain because of how beautiful you thought it would be, and it's nowhere near what you thought it would be. Moshe Rabbeinu alludes to this state of being already in the beginning, something we read just yesterday. This is a wild Torah from Reb Moshe Wolfson. Listen to this. This is crazy. You know, Moshe Rabbeinu begins Sefer Dvarim, and what does he say? He starts mentioning the names of places that we did bad things, that bad things were done. Yesterday in Shul, we were talking about how Moshe Rabbeinu wasn't addressing the people, he wasn't talking about the people he was talking to, because that's a different door. But he was saying, okay, your grandparents, they messed up big time. Where, and where did they mess up? Some of the places, Tofel, Lavan, Chatzerot, Dizahav, Lavan. Rashi tells us about Lavan. Have you heard of a place called Lavan? Lavan, Rashi says, Nei Reb Yochanan, we looked everywhere for this place called Lavan, and there is no place like this Lavan. Aye, so what is it referring to? What's the sin of Lavan? So the sin of Lavan, Rashi says there, it means they complained about the Lavan. What was Lavan? The man. They were quetching over the color of the mana. They were quetching over the man. How could you quetch over the man? What could be, what, what could be, what, how could you quetch over the, a gift like the mana? This is what this kina is basically speaking about. So, what did the tzaddik Reb Moshe Wolfson say? He said an amazing thing. We've learned from his sefer many times, Amun Sita. Wolfson says like this, different spherot correspond to different colors. What's the sphera? What's the color white? What does it correspond to? Chesed. Clean. Tahor. We dress in white on days that we, we, we beseech God for Rachmanus. You know, Kippur, we're, we're dressed in white. Rachmanus, a person is wrapped in white when he gets put into a, a grave. That he should be greeted with Rachmanus, with, with Chesed in Shemayim. Chesed and Kala, they, they dressed white on the day that they choose to, to, to get it together. Because they're asking that this should be filled with Chesed and Rachamim. And we try to awaken this Chesed. And a few psukim later in Dvarim, it says there, Hashem Elokecha Imach, Lo Chasar Tadavar. Aaron and Yonatan Razo have the most gorgeous nigan to these words. Hashem Elokecha Imach, Lo Chasar Tadavar. God's with you. Lo Chasar Tadavar. Nothing's lacking. That's what the mana was. Lo Chasar Tadavar. You didn't miss anything. So Rav, Rav, um, Rav Wolfson says it's like a baby that nurses from the mother. It's not by chance that a mother's milk is white because it's the ultimate chesed, right? It's just there, here. This may be also one of the reasons why we eat milchiks for these nine days of dairy. We need rachmi shamayim. We want to change the din. The din, what color corresponds to din? Color? Red. Blood. And Klal Yisrael is quetching about the mana, about the chesed. So we come and tish above and we say, Hashem, lecha Hashem al chesed. Lecha chesed. We, we, don't, we, don't, we have no idea how to relate to when you just want to be, want to be good to us. You know, the Medrash says, this is crazy, the Medrash says that we actually offered the man to the eagle. Do you know how warped that, that, that statement is? We offered the ultimate chesed we received to Hashem was one of the things we offered to the Egel Azav. It's like you gave us so many good things and while you gave it to us, we so messed up with it. It's like you gave us back Yerushalayim after 2,000 years and a guy that you could say had a lot of schuyot that had a patch on his eye gave the bedroom to the mistress. It's just like a... Dafka, when you're giving such good things, the opposite happens. It's so crazy.
crazy. We don't know what to do with chesed. We don't know what to do with it. Now the Midrash says that there was actually a Zara being done during Shir Sayyam while they were crossing. Some of the Jews got confused while they were crossing. They started doing Avodah Zarah. So we say in this kin, we say in this kin, Lacha Hashem Atzdaka. This is it's it's all you. We forget it. We're, we're we're admitting we don't know what to do with so much good. We're asking you to keep on doing good with us and Chesed, but but we need a kli. Now that our kli is filled with busha and chlima, we need a kli to figure out how are we ever going to pay our debts. How are we ever going to pay our debts? You've given us so much. How are we going to pay the debt? of giving harabai to the Ishmaelim. How are we going to pay the debt in this, in this door? How could we pay a debt for something like this? So there is a way. I heard a story. I heard this story from a, a beautiful story. It was going around. I happened to hear it from, uh, from Reb Moshe Tzvi. This is a beautiful story about um, a girl a little, I think it was a nine-year-old girl that walks into a jewelry store in Eretz Yisrael. Maybe you've heard this story. So Maya Seshahaya, this thing actually happened. This little girl, she goes into a jewelry store in Eretz Yisrael and, and she starts looking at all the beautiful jewelry, all the display cases. It's kind of like husbands and their Shana Rishona, they feel like, oh, I'm gonna go and buy the greatest thing and they go and look at they, they say, show me what you got, and then they, they, they're like, oh, I'm going to get something so beautiful, and then they, they're told the price, and they're like, hmm. maybe one day. So she points to a bracelet that she wants, right? The thing is, is that it, it, it costs 3,000 shekel, okay? So she, the girl says, the nine-year-old says to the store owner, well, no, I'm, fi- I'm, I'm fine, I'll, I'll pay for it. He says, so the store owner says, well, who are you buying it for? He says, I'm buying it for my older sister. Wow, so thoughtful of you. Why are you buying it for your older sister? So the girl says, well, but we're orphans. I don't have a father or a mother, and she takes care of us at home. And I have so much love for her, and I want to buy her this bracelet. So the store owner sees that she pulls out of her pocket a, 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 a bag, and she pulls all the money she's ever collected in her life. And it comes out to a little bit less than eight shekels. By the way, my my daughter Ahava, she's been doing a, she's been doing all these lemonade stands, like as much as she can, a lot. Lately, she's been doing it more and more. And I asked her, and it's hot. She's standing out there. Sometimes she she she, she schleps one of the neighbor's kids. Sometimes Liba goes with her. It's, it's so hot, and I say to her, like, why do you, why do you keep on doing this? You know, Abba, Abba can give you if, you, if you need, if you want money to buy something, you know, Abba will give you. She says to me, Abba, I see that the shul isn't finished yet. I promise you. child's mind is so pure, so holy, so untainted, it's unbelievable. Back to this nine-year-old in the, in the jewelry store, she pulls out this like seven shekel in, in 80 agurot, and the store owner says to her, wow, this is amazing. This is just the right amount that we need. And uh, he says, go get a card, write, write something nice for your sister. And he's trying to wipe away his tears while this happens. She goes home, she brings her sister the gift, and about half hour later, the sister comes back to the store with the, with the bracelet, the older sister, and uh, She's so embarrassed. She comes to the store owner and she says, my sister must have shoplifted here. I'm so sorry. You know, my sister must have stolen this, this bracelet. And um, 
the store owner says, no, no, she, she, didn't, she didn't steal it. She paid for it. She paid for it? So how much did it cost? She said, I'm telling you, she paid for it. And the sister says, there's no way she paid for it. The store owner says, listen to me. She paid for it for a full price. Exactly what it cost. Seven shekel, 80 agurot, and a broken heart. The store owner says, listen to me, I'm a widower. And people come in here all the time and they buy these beautiful gifts and they're trying to express their love, but your sister walked in and she wanted this bracelet for you. It was so clear that she loved you in the most real and authentic way. And frankly, this is the way we, we look back at Hashem on Tisha B'av and this is how we pay back Hashem and say, Maybe, you know, our shul is seven shekel, eight gurot, but the only way it could be a mikdash me'at is if it's a, with a zivchei elokim ruach nishbar, with a broken heart. Yiddishkeit has to break your heart. A relationship with Hashem has to break your heart. Your own Shabbos table has to break your heart. That's the mashlim. The Hashem atzdaka. There's no other way we could mashlim the payment. There's, there's another story like this where a uh, Yid, I don't know why we keep on going to him, I and I do know, because it's Tisha B'av, but there was a wealthy, a wealthy Yid in Lublin that cheated on his wife. Came to the Chose of Lublin to tell the Chose of Lublin, I have this Indian. And the Chose said to him, the guy said, I want to do tshuva, but I have no idea what to do. I have no idea what to do. So the Chose said to him like this, he said, um, there's only one thing you could really do is that you have to walk to the center of the base midrash. Now, the, and remember, Lublin, Lublin was the greatest concentration of Hasidus since the ever, ever. Some say it was the greatest ch- concentration of Talmud Torah and Tzadikim and Talmud Chachamim since Churban Bayit Sheni. How do we know this? Well, one of the teurim, one of the descriptions of what it looked like in the city of Lublin on Shabbos. You know, usually, who, who wears a white kapata and a white strimal these days? Have you, ever, have you ever seen anyone wear that? A white strimal and a white kapata? The big Bali Kabbalah, they do, they wear it. Rav Getz, the Rav of the Kotel, he used to wear it. Have you ever seen a picture of him? And you have this in certain places. It's brought down in a description of the streets of Lublin, in the time of the Choza of Lublin, that there were thousands of people that dressed like this walking the streets of Lublin. So for the following, for the chassid to do the following would be like the ultimate busha. The chassid told him, walk into the middle of the bima, the, the middle of the base marriage, go to the bima, give a clap on the bima, and tell everyone in here what you just did. That's your only takana, the chassid tells the guy. The guy says, there's no way I can do this. <laughs> the leader says, well... If that's the case, you don't have any takana. You don't have any tikkun. There's no keynote. The tinok. Keynote. No, you don't have anything. The guy says, there's no way I could do this. I know myself. And Chayza says, listen, I'm telling you this. You asked, and I'm telling you, this is the only way. So the guy puts his hand in his head, and he starts walking slowly, slowly, till the middle of the basement. He starts going onto the bima, and he, and he goes like this, and like, mamish, like, the Malach took Avram Avinu's hand, right? But he was about to shech, the Choyza grabbed his hand and he said, it was done. He says, what do you mean it was done? You said I have to say it. He said, I saw a Yid that walked to that Bima with such a lave nishbar knowing that he is the most broken Jew in the world that ever existed. Go home, go to your wife, come back for Shachas. Your life just started right now. It's funny that when it comes to a korban, if something's broken, it's puzzle. If a korban, if a limb is not intact, it's puzzle. By a yid, if everything's intact, and you come to bring a korban, you're puzzle. This is this kina. No more games. I'm broken. 
I'm no more games. This is how I'm going to Tisha B'Av. Lecho Adonai Tzedaka, Boises asher yifleisa me'az ve'ad ata ve'lan o boises aponim, ve'yifchin asher nitzlafnu ve'osanu ti'afta. Lecho Adonai Tzedaka, Begoi mikerev goi lekachat m'mas, ve'lan o boises aponim, ve'dofi asher nimtza b'alom m'as ayem asos. Lecho Adonai Tzedaka, ba'alchu alim yifdos lo le'am. ולנו בי שעשה פונים בביים, לא על ים בים סוף גוי בלב בבי שם. לכו אדוני צדקו בזה יחי ואתם עדיי ואני אלוהים. ולנו בי שעשה פונים בחרפינו אדוני בסין כמו עשה לנו אלוהים. לכו אדוני צדקו בטעם שהטעמתו בתלמיד את דבש. ולנו בי שעשה פונים ביום יקרב לפניו סלב ושמן ודבש. לכו אדוני צדקו בחיל כולמן עובר ועמוד ענן. ולנו בי שעשה פונים אליכם רק לא קל. אביסינו בעליהם ברגנן, לכו עד נצדק עמית בעלי חסרנו דבר. ולנו בי שספונים בני ארצוס לבן, נחצי רוס ודיזף כמדובר. לכו עד עיני הצדקו בסיכון ואוג וחומה מלכס כנען. ולנו בי שספונים באחד נשם רב בחרם במצרבן. לכו עד עיני הצדקו בפועל אשר פעלת בארבע עשר מישים. ולנו בי שספונים בצלם יחל כי בואי אנחנו פיישים. לכו עד עיני הצדקה וקימה שילה בן לא וגיבה בן ישראל לא עמים ולנו בי שצא פונים ברשע שנמצא בנו שחר ואובם אנו נכלמים לכו עד עיני הצדקה בשני חור בנו שחר וביצינו ואנחנו קיימים ולנו בי שצא פונים בשובנו אליך בכל לב שתושוב אלינו ברחמים לכו עד עיני הצדקה בלתי שם ועד שנה שעשו סינא כבו שם ולי שמה ולנו בי שצא פונים כסוב האיש חמוד אייס התה אליהי אוזנך ושמע. We're going to skip now a little bit and we're going to go... Oh, there's so many here. Go to Kina Chav Dalet, please. Kina Chav Dalet. What's the first word of it, Yudi? Kina Chav Dalet. Sorry, what did you say? What's Chavdalid? Al-Khurban Yes, Al-Khurban Beis HaMikdash. This is, this is a very... This one is... Uh, we, we skipped a few that... We need to breathe a little bit. I couldn't keep on going. This. <clears throat> Kina Chavdalid, Al-Khurban Beis HaMikdash. This, we have a Kina now that helps us break down a little bit the details of what we actually lost in the Beis HaMikdash. It starts going, you know, it speaks about the Shulchan, the Menorah, it starts having context. It, it used to be that every time a Jew was killed, you remembered their name, you remembered their face. And um, we've, we've, we're so far past that, it's, it's just unbelievable how we're so far past that. But when we do stop, and we have obviously, like in Yad Vashem and other memorials, or the Chol Ishi Hashem that every person has, and I have like... I have a daily, it's a, it's, a, it's a very heavy daily reminder. I have a daily post I get every day of a different face from Auschwitz. Um, I don't know how long I'm going to last with it, but uh, so far I haven't been skipping over it. And when, when, when the Khurban has a name and a face and a detail, it kind of becomes more real. And uh, one of the things that we don't have anymore, Rav Biederman speaks a lot about this when it comes to Emunah, how the Lechem Hapanim resembled Emunah. So many beautiful Torahs from Rav Biederman on this. And uh, I, I saw something from the Ariza, something so wild. I want to share this with you. <laughs> to put things in context. Listen to this. In the time of the Ari, in Tzfat, there was a, a simple Yid that would hear in the drushes of the Rav, he would, that when the Rav would darshan about Lechem Apanim, that they were bringing Beis HaMikdash, so, and the fact that we don't have any Lechem Apanim anymore. So the Yid came back to his house, and he was very, very sad, and he told his wife about the drusha of the Rav. So he, he said, maybe we should, we should make 12 little chalas and give them a gift to Hashem. Who tells us no? 
And the woman agreed, and she, Friday morning she baked 12 challahs, and exactly like the description she heard about the hachana of the lechem upon him. And uh, in the afternoon, when the shul was empty, so this yid came and took these very smelly, you know, yummy challahs, and he put it into the Aron Kodesh while he was davening to Hashem that please accept this lechem upon him, like a korban. And, and later in the day, the shamis came to shul, and he uh, opened the aron to prepare the sfarim for, for laning. Yuri, did this ever happen by us? Yeah. He prepared the sfarim for reading on Shabbos, and when he saw a bag with bread inside, the aron kodesh, he didn't think twice, and he, he took it to his house to feed his family, and this happened, kept on going on over and over again. This is the time of the ari, okay, in Sfat. So one, one Friday, um, the Rav of the shul, he, he was taking time with his learning. He didn't go home that fast, and suddenly he sees a Jew that he, puts, <laughs> he opens up the Aron Kodesh and puts inside there a, a bag with challah. And he starts saying this tefillah. And the Rav there could not control himself and starts screaming at the Yid, you fool. You think God is drinking and eating your, 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 your challah? What a chait. To, to, to have God, the imagery of God as someone that eats. What are you doing? And the Yidla was so embarrassed. And he actually broke down and told the Rav he's been doing this since he heard the drasha about Lechem upon him from the Rav. So the Rav immediately called the Shamas. And the Shamas admitted that it's actually him that takes it every week. And he feeds his family. And the Yid went back to his house so broken over what he had just experienced. Now, the Arizal heard about this. And one of the students of the Arizal came and told this Rav, listen, you have to go to your house and prepare, because tomorrow when you're going to say the drasha, you're not going to be alive anymore. So this Rav ran, this Rav that embarrassed this Jew that made the lechem upon him, when he heard this from one of the students of the Arizal, he ran to the Arizal, and the Ari told him like this, Miyom shecharav beis amigdash, Lo haya la Kadosh Baruch Hu nachas ruach, kfi shaya lo ma'amase shel ha-Yehudi hazeh, velachen nigzar alecha lamut. The Ari told this Rav, from the time of the destruction of the Beis Hamikdash, Hashem never had as much nachas as He had from this lechem upon Him of this Jew, and therefore it's decreed upon you to die, and it's exactly what happened. The next morning, this Rav died. So on, on, on Tisha B'Av, when we're not eating, and, and we're not... What is the Avoda now? It's to, it's to think that from the day that the Beis Amikdash is Kharev, I know maybe some of you are, get, are starting to get the headache, or because there's no coffee, so it's starting to mess you up a little bit. You're hungry. It's important to take a moment right now and think about how hungry you are. Usually they say, don't think about it, it'll make it worse. No, no, no. Actually think about it. Think about your mouth. Because since the day the Beis HaMikdash was destroyed, the Shulchan of the Melech, we'll have coffee tomorrow or tonight. We'll have a, a bagel, we'll have a chavita, we'll have a, a, an omelet, we'll have something to eat later. But since the time of the Chorban Beis Amikdash, the king's table is empty. There's no lechem upon him. Let me let me throw some words out to you. Es korbani lachmi leishai. What does that do? What's the next words? Reyach nichochi tishmeru lakriv li bemoado. Korban lachem, korbani lachmi leishai. We we don't we don't we speak about it in the Torah. We get so excited, we lean. It's a zecher for what once was, but then there's some yidden that hear that things aren't anymore, and they may look a little foolish, and they have their wives make breads or they themselves do something. I once saw a yid that brought a harp to the base of Migdash. He was arrested, but 
he's not arrested, he was detained in the entrance because they didn't let him bring it inside. But he just simply read there, Hallelujah, Benevel Bechino, Ale Asar Va Ale Novel, Ale Goyam Bechino. This is what once was. I, I, how could, why should I just accept that it just is? Still. It's usually those people, we look at them and we say, they're the They're the wacky ones, right? Everything has to be formal, mekubal al abrios, accepted, vechule. You don't have any lechem upon him anymore. How much does it bother you? How much does it bother me? How much in this fast am I going to try to not find things to make my fast go better, smoother, faster? How many things do I have prepared to watch later in the day so that the fast goes, so I get through it? And, 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 and certain stories we have of, uh, we, we hear about this and we're dying for the fast to go through me, get into me already. Make me a Geula Dika Yid, make me a Beis Amigdash Yid, make me a Jew that lives this. Make me a Jew that lives this. There's a, there, there's in, 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 in the Yom Kippur davening, you know, these things, when, when, when Tisha B'Av gets into us, we become, li- we become alive. We're scared, we become, we become depressed. La'efech, we become alive. There's in, the, in Yom Kippur davening, we say, Ashrei Ayin Raz Vul HaMesukan, HaMetukan, Praiseworthy is the eye that saw when things were the way they were supposed to be. Chai bo shachan. That means life was found in that moment. They were alive. The Beis Amigdash was life. We, we think of stones and glorious sinks and stuff. It, the bottom line of the beauty meant you felt alive. Beauty means to be alive, to feel alive. So I heard from Reb Chaim Velozhner the following thing, and we're going to say the next kina. Reb Chaim Velozhner said, it basically, he asked, is it, how could it be that we, 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 we mourn the Beis HaMikdash every year, year after year? And Chazal established that when something is dead, after a year the pain is no longer, and a person forgets. And in fact, in Halacha Vavelus, there's moments of saying, die, you must speak, you have to get up. Like when a person lo aleinu sits shiva, shiva's over. What's the first thing they have to do? Well, get distracted? No, you take a walk. You go and walk around because the Torah is telling you you can't stay there because something's dead, right? How could it be we mourn every year, year after year, over the churban beis hamikdash? Especially in this kina that we're about to say right now, espod bechol shana v'shana mispeid chadash. Every year, I'm going to have a new hesped, a new e- eulogy. Reb Chaim Velozhin has said, this is proof that the Beis HaMikdash is still alive. Because if it wasn't, it would have taken one year, one shiva, one shloshim, 11 months of Kaddish, the Gamarnu. The mere fact that every year we find new ways of crying over the Beis HaMikdash. Ha-raya, that itself is proof how much this, this binyan is so alive in our lives. Because if it wasn't, then it wouldn't, we, wouldn't, we wouldn't do this to ourselves. You know, you don't ask for, for Rahmanis over the dead, nachon? It's Asr, actually. Rachem al tzion ki hibeis chayenu. I'm asking Ribbono Shleilam mercy over Yerushalayim, over Tzion, over Beis Chayenu. Rabbi Yaakov Me'emdin says that's another proof that it's still alive. It's not dead. It's not gone. It just seems like it. And on Tisha B'av, I'm meeting that pain a little bit closer. And that's why every year when it comes to this Kina, whew, I remember the year after Ari Fold was killed. Espod Lashem Mispeit Chadash. A new misped. But you know, every single year I'll say a new hesped. Lo chaser. Lo chaser. Lo chaser ma la'asot. Every person in their own, in their own, uh, in their own Dalit Amos, in their own life, in their own family tsaras.
how many homes are still breaking as we're speaking, it's just not to be believed. Isn't this Mispeit Chadash? Shem <laughs> Barbaimisal <laughs> Serafim Omdim now, Mima, Matkines, and Mohonos, Mitoch Machman, Vezadim Karu, Yemei Ashmad, Nehon, Shesyam Basara Kioros, Kenim Srula Berinam Shuros, Ushna Maris Matduras, Master of Animation Merkava, Kuro de Lard Zara Kiakava, Hoylesh, I'm going with Nekro Vimbal, Yes, I'm already made Surado, Vatlan Ivra Holy Rado, Raima Bamte, Yafidado, Call Click as the Clay Clays of Kutas of Shusman Bezalav. Betsayah <laughs> Well, <laughs> אמר לו משחית, מחמצתי דרדרת, ניסיתי לזה בנפשי מחבי ונסעתי, עזבתי את בייסי וסנחלוסי, נטשתי. אוקיי, אז let's go to Hebron. קינה כף וו. This קינה brings us to Hebron. אז בהלוך ירמיהו על קברי אבוס. And when you think about Tisha B'Av, we all know the origins of Tisha B'Av in the Torah are, of course, the Miraglim. <coughs> that when they came back and said what they said, and they got us all crying, <laughs> we know that was Tisha B'Av. But what was part of the story, part of the story of Tisha B'Av, part of the story of the initial Tisha B'Av was there was a Yid. And he went to a place to be saved from Tisha B'Av. And that is Kalav ben Yefuna, who goes to Hebron, to Davin, to be saved from bad etzas, which will lead to bad things happening. So it's amazing that we were going through in the time of Yirmiyahu and Avi. Hakadosh Baruch Hu himself feels betrayed. Things are things are awful in Eretz Hakodesh. Hashem felt that he had enough, and, and somehow Hashem like wakes up in a certain moment. And he's wondering, where did my children grow? Where, where, where did my kinderlach go? And while the Beis HaMikdash is being destroyed, the Midrash tells us, Hashem sends Yirmiyahu to Hebron. He tells him to go and tell the Avot and the Imahot of the tragedy. What a schus we have. We could wake up in the morning, decide to daven shachers, go to the same place. Go to the same place that Yirmiyahu Anavi was told to go to during Churban Abayis. To go and wake up Rachame of us, Vemos, the compassion of our fathers and our mothers. Some of our Chavar were just there last week. Now, for Yirmiyahu to do this, it's not so simple. What's Yirmiyahu? Yirmiyahu is a Kayan. And Yirmiyahu goes. 
And one by one, the others begin to defend us, and the imahas also, the ma'armamas also begin to defend us. But the only one, this kina basically is based on the midrash, the only one that was able to give Yirmiyahu anything he needed to feel that Am Yisrael could continue to go on is, was not in Hebron. He had to go somewhere else. He had to go to Beit Lechem. Isn't that wild what we're described right now? We're in Efrat, we're described, it's Tisha B'av. We're speaking about Yirmiyahu, that he was in Yerushalayim. He had to pass by here to go to Hebron to do the following Kina, right? And then he, then, but then he has to come back and go through Beit Lechem, which is literally right here, to bring down the Rachamim Atsumim and to get a sense that Am Yisrael will eventually, eventually, as long as they're kosher to the Avos and Imos, they will be, they will be taken care of. Why did it boil down to Rachel? Why did it boil down to Rachel Imenu? So you know that the night, some people say that the night that we really became compassionate Yidden was the fateful night when Yaakov was supposed to marry Rachel, but instead he marries Leah. How, did, how could it be that he ended up marrying Leah? It's only because of one person. Because Rachel didn't want her sister to be embarrassed. And to avoid her sister's embarrassment, she gave her sister the simanim. She stepped aside that night just so that her sister wouldn't be embarrassed. And this, this kina is basically describing how Yirmiyahu is basically saying to the other Seymahs, how could you guys stand, how could you just sit around? How could you just lie here? But when he gets to Rachel, he sees no one's, no one's just lying around. There was a Mama Rachel who was willing to be so embarrassed that one fateful night for the sake of her sister's cover. And the kina ends with Leah and Rachel weeping for their children back and forth together. Mashiach ben David, Mashiach ben Yosef. The whole story of our Geula is a product of this kina. So, as we're saying, this kina, it's just a... I couldn't help but have the imagery play a role for those of us that are sitting here. As bahaloch yirmiyahu al kivrei avos, because we're literally on his path. So we'll say it together. As bahaloch yirmiyahu al kivrei avos, Go Marubayan <laughs> The next kina we're going to do is kina lamed aleph. I just don't have the uh, is it h tukat bekebi lamed aleph. Yeah, h tukat. Actually, you're going to lead it. 
I think of you every year with this, with this one. You're going to lead it. This is a kina of, 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 of contrast. This is a kina of, of pilpul. The kina of pilpul, this kina of, you know, this, this movement in Yiddishkeit. What's this movement? This thumb, this, this, what's this? What's the, what's the wording? What's it? This is pilpul. Huh? Bilbul or pilpul? Pilpul, yeah. This pilpul, right? So this, this is a Yiddish tnua. This is a Jewish, a Jewish movement. Pilpul. So this is a kind of, 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 of contrast. This whole world is one big pilpul. And this is the, what's the contrast, and this is true in our lives, because everything I said this morning, you all know is true, and also doesn't saute the fact that there's another tzad to our lives. And it's the contrast between the glory and splendor of who we were in certain moments of history, like when we left Mitzrayim, to the cherpa of what we looked like when we left Yerushalayim. Same people, same nation, same DNA, and what a difference. People that looked so much, so holy, so exalted as we left Mitzrayim, and people that couldn't look more Nebuch when we left Yerushalayim. And all pain from our lives essentially come from this paradox that is very, has played a role, is very apparent in everything that we're going through in, in life. You see, we teach, in, in, we, we, like, especially with children, we teach about this first part of the Kina, Betzeis and Mitzrayim. Our children probably know Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim inside out, right? With all the, all the pressure we put on ourselves as parents to make sure that night of Chinuch, the night of Leil Seder, is like we give over Yiddishkeit that night. So they know Betzeis and Mitzrayim. Right? They know that. They, they know that. Hopefully they know that very well. Hopefully we know that very well. The only problem is, is that the other part of it is not something that we, that we, we teach because we're embarrassed of. Do we teach our children what we look like? Betzeisim Yerushalayim? What we, you know what? Most, most people have not experienced Betzeisim Yerushalayim. They've experienced in their lives Betzeisim Yerushalayim. But you know that any, any, anyone that ever... It's funny, recently, I, like, at least five different people last week told me how much they hated Gemara Yevamos. I don't know why. <laughs> I mean, I do know why, but I don't know why it happened to me last week, even though they're in Ksuvahs now, but I don't know why it happened to me last week. People were reminiscing. And they were, des they were describing wh who they became during those last few pages of Gemara Yevamos. Like what they started to think about themselves, about the world. All because they were stuck in a in Kharif in Khari Pilpulim that seemed like it has no end or no Tachlis even. But it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a sugya. It's a sugya in Shaz. But anyone that, that, that ever learned Gemara that gets stuck in a pilpul understands, even if I don't understand how this binyan came to be, we got in here and we're going to get out of here because there are captains of this ship that designed this way to be like this. Nachon? But sometimes when you're in the middle of the sugya and you start looking at all these different pieces coming at you, actually Fent Gedalia spoke about this a little bit. You have no idea what's coming. You don't understand why is the Gemara bringing this up right now, and it seems like it has no kesher to what you just learned. And that's the same thing that happens to us in our life. Why in the world am I dealing with this Indian right now? This has nothing to do with what, I'm, with what I thought my parsha was. It has nothing to do with it. But the secret of a, of a, of a Gemara Rebbe, for instance, a real good one, is that they're, they're, as they're leading you into Ma Kesher world, they're also kind of like giving you eyes of you'll see, you'll see, you'll see. Now those eyes, the words you'll see emanating from the eyes, sometimes people need it much, much longer for many more days and many more shiurim. Sometimes needed for Homo Sechta. Um, but it's really the, the richness and the beauty of our Masora, anyone that sunk their teeth into a sugya, understands that you will see it adds up and guess what even if we can't figure out how it adds up we know someone's going to show us how it adds up one day that's the world of the Gemara 
Now the final sentence of this kina is is the siyam shas. You know, there's there's a beautiful, beautiful like minute of. Uh, I just saw like a few minutes of footage of of Rav Nassim Tzvi speaking at one of the siyam shases. Maybe it's a sound bite on that podcast that you sent me, right? There's not Hajnalach. What's the, what does he say there? Hajnalach Talmud Bavli, right? Who would have right? Who would have thought such beautiful words? So Hajnalach Talmud Bavli, right? That's what he says. Shas Mashu Kazen Hajnalach. After you go through the whole thing. So I, when I, when so I once, I forget where I learned this, but when someone ex- tried to explain this kina, is that Yerushalayim, the last line of the kina is Beshuvi Yerushalayim. The only thing is, is that up until you get to that point of I will make it back to Yerushalayim, there's so many Betseisim Yerushalayim, Betseisim Yerushalayim. I was once beautiful, then I started learning Shas, and I, I, don't, I feel like I'm an idiot, right? <laughs> or I, I thought I was once matzliach, then I got so complicated with other things, I don't see anywhere, anywhere out of here. So the tzaddik that said that this kina, if you don't finish the end of the kina, then you know you'll be back here at Tisha B'av every single year. But you have to get to the last line of this kina that says, B'shuvi el Yerushalayim. It, it has to be part of the way that I say this kina. So this is like now we're, we're going more towards the end of the keynote. And you start to see this motif. It's going to keep on repeating now. I don't know how many more we're going to see, but it starts to go over, you know. Basically, so many Yidin have fallen between these two sentences, between this contrast of B'tseisi mi Mitzrayim, B'tseisi Yerushalayim. Abba, you told me that good things happen to Yidin that believe in Hashem. How could this happen to this person? Remember the moment your child asked you that first question that you had to make up some corny, stupid answer because you didn't know how to get out of it? That's one of the worst days of parenting. It's one of the worst days of parenting. This kina is coming to say to all parents, hold on. With all the answers you had to come up with until now, don't worry. But say to Mitzrayim, Beshuvi So there's a nigan. Yaakov taught me a few years ago when we were down by Jihad David. Apparently, it's a camp, nigga. Well, you say Kino, some camps. So. You'll lead us with this one.
Shalim and go to Kina Lamed Vav. These last, these five Kinos, the next five Kinos all begin with the word Sion, Bishuvi Lidu Shalim. We're almost there. We're calling upon Eretz HaKodesh, Eretz Yisrael to think of us, just to think about us, just the way that we're thinking about Eretz Yisrael. Sion Halot Tish Ali, Lishlom Asiraich. Yerushalayim, you're calling, aren't you calling out, calling out your, 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 your beloved ones? Now, these, this kina was written by someone that Mamish loved Eretz Yisrael with all his heart and soul. And that is Kamuvan, the, the famous poet Rabbi Yehuda Levi. Rabbi Yehuda Levi was a doctor, he was a philosopher, the author of the Kuzari, an amazing poet. You find so many of his, of his poetry of expressing his emotions all about his love and connection to Eretz HaKodesh. And this kina asks the question, how could it be that Eretz Yisrael didn't come to our defense? Like, how is it possible that Eretz Yisrael itself allows, within her borders, 
anything or anyone aside for Am Yisrael. How could it be? Here in the Zayit lives a, a, someone that, that um, is very, works hand in hand with my Rosh Yeshiva of Ravinder for many years, Rabbi Jeffrey Sachs, and he's written and done a lot of work about the life of Shai Agnon. I came across a piece that he wrote recently as I was learning this kina regarding Shai Agnon and regarding how we relate to this, this kina as we're, as we're nearing the end of, of getting up from the floor. So in 1966 was the year that Shai Agnon won the Nobel Peace Prize for uh, literature. And when he gave his speech, he spoke about the love of Torah. And the king of Sweden approached him and asked him, you know, where do you come from? And he answered, he said, like all Jews, I come from Yerushalayim. And then he said like this, and I have the quote of this is his speech. As a result of the historic catastrophe in which Titus of Rome destroyed Yerushalayim and Israel was exiled from its land, I was born in one of the cities of exile in Buchach. But always I regarded myself as one who was born in Yerushalayim. In a dream and a vision of the night, I saw myself standing with my brother, the, my brother Levites in the Beis Amigdash singing with them the songs of David Melech Yisrael, melodies such as no ear has heard since the day our city was destroyed and its people went into exile. I suspect that the angels in charge of the shrine of music, fearful lest I sing in, wakeful, in wakefulness what I had sung in the dream, made me forget by day what I had sung at night. For if my brethren, the sons of my people, were to hear they would be unable to bear their grief over the happiness they have lost. To console me for having prevented me from singing with my mouth, they enable me to compose songs in writing. Such beautiful words from Shai Agnon. So, the, you know, the Parshias that we read in Bein HaMetzarim, they don't necessarily seem to have a common denominator. There's always setbacks, there's always problems. But there is one common denominator. How badly, how badly, how badly I yearn for Eretz Yisrael. That's what the Bnei Yisrael says, the common denominator with all the parshias that we read during Bein HaMitzarim. And Pinchas, we begin to learn about the Nachalas of Eretz Yisrael. Parshat Matot, the Shvatim, uh, decide what their connection to Eretz Yisrael is going to be. In Masay, we learn about the Gvulot, about the boundaries of Eretz Yisrael. And in Sefer Dvarim, we review, like we learned yesterday, we review Hashem's promise to give us Eretz Yisrael. So these next keynotes, we're just going to do this one, see on Halot Tishalim, is basically that on Tisha B'av, we're not just mourning. And that's very important, especially as we're about to hit Chatzot Ayom. On Tisha B'av, we're not just mourning what we had and that we don't have but we're also reawakening a tshuka. We're reawakening a desire to want Eretz Yisrael. And even if we don't want yet things that are holy and good for us, and for a typical Jew right now that doesn't have that Eretz Yisrael bug, they can dive in to want to want to have it. And the headquarters for wanting to want is Tisha B'av. So Tzion, this is Kina Lamed Vav, Tzion Halot Tishali Lishlom Asiraich. Dor Sheishloim Yisraim Yisra Adonai. Miyam Umizrach Umitzafam Vetayman Shlom Rachok Vekorov Se'i Mikol Avaraich. Ushlom Asiti Gvanai Send Mav Ketal Chemon Venichsaf Vyotam Alaraich. Liv Kol Senu Seich Anisan Nimim Ei Seich Lom Shiva Shvu Seich Anichin Lishiraich. Li Bidu Beisal Lifnei El Meod Yemel Mechanei Mechon Negei Toraraich. Shamashkina Shuna Lach, we are Tzrech Basal Mosharei Shara Kshareich. Uchva, Dadi Nelevad, Hayam, or Lech Ben Tsar, Vashemesh Kolim or Reich. Efra Lenaf, she lished up in Mokoma Shiruach, Elim Shpuch, Albi Hilaich. Ad Bed Meluch of Ad Kisa Yakov. El, Vecha Shuavadim and Echitat Hilaich. Meet Nani Meshotet, Bamkomot, Ashenik Lolim. Lechazayak, Betzilach, Mia Selik Nafai, Varachik Nedod. Agid, the Visilva, Bemzalai, Hippolapia, the Arts of Vitavanai, the Mechanis, Varai, 
אף כי בעמדי עלי כי בסבי סביב ישתם עלי חבלון. מי יבחר כבר לה איך אבור בירך וחר מלך ומת בגלל משנה מלך הר אברייך. הר אברים והורה הר אשר שם שני עולים גדולים ערייך מולייך. חיי נשמה מסבר ארצך למעט דרף גס ופרך. ונוף וצוף נעלייך ינעם לנפשי הלוך אמרו מי אחרף עליך ארבוש במה אשר יד וילייך במקום מר לנך אשר נגנז במקום קרובייך אשר שכנו חדרי חדרייך אגוז ואשליך פעין עזר ועקוב זמן חידל בארץ פרס נזרייך יחר ויחור שתת בעזר חדרי 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 איזה זכירה עלי שתי לחמי מלך וסגר לבים במצעי שמרייך, תינוק לעשי אופי אבר וכן אלי למרייך. ובאך ניגשו נפשי זכבירייך, אם מסמיק למשל בסר והקוראים לשם ומסך. ובריחים על שברייך, יהיו שביל אשר אין נגדך ומשלח בים. איש במקום על עיניך אשר עלייך, כדי למנך אשר לא מספר זמן אל גבר ושכחו גדלייך. המחזיקים בשוליך ומסעם צינון לצון חוץ מזין צינית מולייך. שינה רפואה עשרה עשרה יער, חור בגוד לעמים בדמות עצומה לך ישן אבי אך לב קודם כל מה מכניס אל ילחוס נר להם ודור ודור נצילייך. איבה למור שב אלייך ואש לי אינו איש יבחר ויקרא וישכון חצלייך. אש לי מלך ויגיע ויהיה על עשר אלייך ויקור אל אש חייך. לי רייס בטרי ואז בחילייך ולעלייך בשמחותך ושובייך אליי. קדמוס נעוריך. סקיפ טו פקינה מ"א שעלי שרופה באש We're going to do, this is the second to last one we're going to do. Shali Srufa Ba'esh, and we're talking to the Torah in this kina. I want you all, with every, any koach that you have, to, to take all these words we're going to be, we've been saying, and especially this kina, open up your hearts very strong, because I want to read for you a description of something that's basically the kina, this kina. But in our words, that we can understand this better. We say in this kina, that the Torah itself should wake up and cry out. We wanted, before we were talking to Eretz Yisrael to cry out, now in this kina we're speaking to the Torah itself to cry out. Who wrote this kina? So this kina was composed for the horrible burnings of the Gemaras and other Sifri Kodesh and Sifri Torah, which took place in Paris, in the 13th century, I think it was 1242, where the church gathered in a, a public square from all the villages and neighboring towns, everyone came to see the burning of Sfarim. And it just took, it, the burning took days. And it was the Maram of Rotenberg, he was the, he was the from the end of the, the Balei Tosfos, he was the one that wrote this kina over the Churban Atona. And what was he feeling? I want you to think of your most precious book that you have in your home, whether you got it in a, in a Yerusha, or you got it, I don't know, you worked hard to get it. I was just sharing with you guys last week where I, I went to the, to the library in Gush, where they showed me the Cheder Amsterdam in the library, the, a mind-blowing library that everyone should go and see in the library of, of Yeshivat HaRetzion. On the side room over there, they have a whole room, it's called Cheder Amsterdam, and it's all the sperm that they were able to get from the war. I was thinking when I was in that room over there, looking at these sperm they were able to get from the war, from World War II, what would happen right now if we took one book of this, and someone came and lit it on fire? It's not, you know, three weeks imagery, why not, right? Now then imagine that we took one shelf of saved sperm that were passed down generation after generation, that had a place in every Jewish family in their heart and their soul. Think of your own Aron Sfarim right now. Think of what's most precious to you. I know, I have a Sefer, a tiny little Sefer, that I got as a Yerusha from my grandfather who I'm named after. It's, it's mamish, a broken, it's a broken Sefer. You have to, I have to work on it and I have to find a book binder and rebind it. And If someone touched it, touched it, it would drive me insane. Now imagine every safer your own taken and piled into a pile and put up in flames. This has happened to us. So imagine what the Maharam of Rotenberg was feeling when he saw this. 
in front of his eyes. What did it mean to the Yidden of those times? Now, in our times, even with all the pain of a Sefer that's burnt, we always know, well, I could probably get another copy, <laughs> right? Back then, in, tw- in, in, in the 13th century in Paris, when the books are being burnt, there were no other copies. There were no printing presses that were working, functioning, printing the sperm that were being burnt. These were handwritten manuscripts, which contained within them the whole Masora of our Torah. And the church, Yemach Shemam, they sought out every single manuscript they can get their hands on. So when the Maharam of Rottenberg saw this and described this, and the Jews lived for this, he thought this may be the end of Torah Shabal Peh. If all you have is what's in front of you, and you don't know of any other copies, and it's being burned, you think maybe this is the end. You actually think this. So this Shali Sufa Ba'esh was a kina for the Torah being burned because we're Amma Sefer. And without the Torah, we're not an Am. Now the German, the Germans burning of bodies, that began in 1939. But as far back as 1935, they began with the burning of the Sfarim as well. They were on a campaign to destroy all the Sfarim. When I had the privilege of going to Yeshivat Chachmei Lublin, the guy that was taking us on the tour said, I want you to sit on these steps while I, while I tell you the following story. And this is not exactly the story he told me, but I'm going to take you to the steps of Yeshivat Chachmei Lublin to get a taste of this kina right before we say it. This is an article that came out, I'm just, I'm just translating into English. As the Nazis, as the Germans captured Lublin, they get to Yeshiva Chachmei Lublin. This is a yeshiva that was founded nine years prior, in 1930, by the famous tzaddik, Reb Meir Shapiro of Lublin. The Germans, Yimach Shemam, they don't find the students in the building when they come to capture Lublin, because yeshiva didn't open that zman. The scent of war and, and of terror was already in the air. The building stood intact, it was all there, you know, in the... Yeshiva Chachmei Lublin, they had this Degem of the Beis HaMikdash also. A beautiful one. The Nazim, the Germans, they're not looking for the rabbis or the students this day. They're looking for something else. They want to reach the Otsar Hasfarim. They want to reach the library. Where there were 22,000 Sfarim that were in that massive library. It was the largest in Europe. Many of them were antiques, things you couldn't find. It's because Mayor, Mayor Shapira was known to be a Sfarim collector of rare, rare things. The Germans, what did these Yamach Shemamim do? They gathered, they took the whole library that was in the yeshiva, all the Sfarim. They hired, hired, they demanded the local orchestra, it was basically the orchestra that would, that would the local the municipality there, they would come and play, and they commanded the Jews to stand around the fire while the orchestra was playing, and the Jews saw their sfarim being burnt. The fire got bigger, the band kept on playing, the Yidin are weeping, and the Germans are laughing. And their laughter is getting stronger and louder. The sfarim burnt for over 20 hours. And the Germans afterwards would write in, their, in, their, in the newspaper, it was a pride for us to destroy the Jewish academy. We were able to, for 20 hours, our hearts could not find a greater joy. As the local Jews of Lublin stood around and cried, and as the band was playing its, its, its notes, Everything seemed like it was perfect. There are three other articles in here, we don't have time, describing the simcha our enemies had while looking at our faces while our svarim were burnt. If you want to get a taste of Mesiris Nefesh of Reb Nassim of Breslover, there's a teaching in the Kutei Alachas, that's Shaykh to Pashas Vayichi. 
where he speaks about the holiness of the Jewish printing press. We once learned this teaching. We learned it while we were in Breslov by Reb Nassim. Baruch Hashem, today we have, we have come back stronger than ever as Amma Sefer, with more and more and more Sfarim being printed on a daily basis, causing many of us quite holy damage in our pockets. We'll take that kind of damage any day over the type of damage that this kina written by Maharam of Rutenberg describes. Shali srufa ba'esh lishlom avelayich, hamisavim shchon b'chatzar zvulayich, hashayafim ba'afar eretz v'akavim mishtayim imalei moked glilayich, holchim chasheichim v'ein noyga v'kovim l'or yomam, asher yizrach alem v'alayich, u'shlom enosh ne'enach, bochei belev nishmar tamid mekonen alei tzidich avalayich, v'yisonen kesoni muvnos yana v'yikra misped ma'a b'galayich. Eich <laughs> כן בחר בחר אלוהים ומה אספק דלים בזרח בגבולך לי אסמאל פית לדס כי תסמאל וסד מכבוד רבי נמשול משלך מה שאלה מלך אשר בחר משתי בנאים צוף אשר היא כבר כנעת במילייך תחס מעיר תתקע סיני לבושך וסרק תת לבוש אמנוס תחליף סים לסמאלייך ואלי דמאוס עדי יהיו כנחה ויגיעו נתקבו לשני צרי אצילייך משה וארם באורה הר ושאר יש תורה חדשה למה נשרפו גלילייך חודש שלישי והוגשר הלוי להשחיץ חן דוסך בכל יופי כלילייך גדל לנו חוס בעוד שנה באיבו לסדר לסדר באש דס אז את השלום כלפי אלייך אסמא לנפשיך ירב לחיקי אחו אחרי רייס ישר עשו שלולייך אל תוך רחוב הקנית דחס ואומר שלהם ולגן אשר ימצאים לבוא יקרא לך לידע ונצוי דרך לאחי ואבינו לכם בלי שם אצלייך יום תג בפי מדבש למסור ממש כדמאו סבק דרס גרב וגרב אלייך יערב לעיניי שואב מימי דמעה ידי חלו לכל מחזיק נכנף מילייך אך יחרוב ובלט אבל לחייה יעבור כי איניך מלאך מי לנדוי בעלייך לא כך צורי כספי הלך בדרך למי רחוק בימה לא נעשו צלח ואני כשוח וגם עוד נשעת ויבת מהן כזרים ולא ישעל מגדלייך לא אשמע אוי לכל שרים ושרי סלי כי נתקו חבלי תופי חלילייך אלבש ועץ כרס בשק, אין עימד יקרו עצמו מכל יבויון. נפשו יזכר עלייך, עצמו מאוי דם מאוי ליוי, מה שיזרח אל כה. אבל יחשיך אלי ואלייך, זכי בכל מר לצור אשיב לא ינך. ואל חליך ולא יזכר עבד כל יחי, כי לבוש שק על אהוד מרי ואשר יתנק לך מזבדן מלך. ואין לך מרצה ואשר יבוד יש בדבר ואין משלו לך, עוד ידי בדי שיניים. וסייף תקחי תלכי מחור צוי מחולך מלבבי צולך לאור לך ויגיע לך אשכח ויגירו אף לייך. אוקיי חבר'ה, it's time to begin to get up as we're going to be singing אלי ציון וערער. This is the last kina we're going to be doing. This is kina Mem He, 45. And we're going to finish davening also. And hopefully, 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 Tisha B'Av is getting through us. Hopefully it's getting through us. And hopefully, Be'ezer Hashem Barach, that Nitzotz, that Tmimus of Jack in our minds and our souls that says, this really could be the last one should find no place of cynicism or sarcasm in anywhere of our lives. And we should get up and continue to get up, non-stop. Kumi ori kiva orech uchvod Hashem alayich zarach. We end the keynote speaking about a woman that's in labor pains. And Rav Salavitchik used to say, you know, we, we use the imagery here of giving birth. Elit Sion ve'areha kmo isha betzireha. Because can you tell a woman that's in birth, that, that's going through labor, to stop crying? Don't ever try that. There's no Indian. It's, 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 shouldn't say anything. 
Whatever we really say, we can't be comforted. That's the truth. But there are screams that follow the birth pangs of labor. And that scream is called Mazel Tov. It's a boy, it's a girl. And that's how we end the keynote, waiting to hear those screams. So if you could please stand and we'll sing this together. Yeah. <laughs>